Now, we've all been there before. You have all this debt, all these different places. Well, let me tell you about PDS Debt. They're awesome. They're really, really great. So PDS Debt has customized options for anyone who's struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collections, medical bills. If you guys are making payments every month on your debt and your balances aren't going down, this is the program for you. PDS Debt provides options that consolidate your debt into one low monthly payment. Everyone with $10,000 or more in eligible debt qualifies and there's no minimum credit score required. Bad and fair credit are accepted. PDS Debt is a top rated company on Google and they have an A plus rating on the BBB. You know, I really do think that this could help a lot of people because when you have so many different payments going to different places, it's so much easier to just say, you know, one spot right there, one payment, low payment, that's PDS Debt. Now, PDS Debt is offering a free debt analysis. It only takes about 30 seconds. You can head over to pdsdebt.com slash Harloff and you get your free debt assessment today. pdsdebt.com slash Harloff and get your free assessment today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show. Happy Monday. And this is definitely going to be a happy Monday for everybody who's seen Dune Part 2 because we're going to get into it. It's a spoiler-heavy discussion. If we get to it, there's a couple other stories but I think the majority of it is going to be us kind of talking about and I think raving about Dune part two. And as I posed in the, in the title of this, is it one of the greatest science fiction movies of all time? Or is it way too early to say you need time to marinate? What do you think? We're going to talk about all of that. Uh, myself and John Roca here today. So if you're brand new to the channel. You've never been here before. Hit that button, man. Subscribe to the channel. Let's get talking. Let's talk about all this different stuff. We got a lot of things going on, and we got a out of the theater for Kung Fu Panda tomorrow night. That's going to be fun. But today, it's all about Dune Part Two. It's about all the performances. We'll talk about how it is, just the grand scale of it. And I um, threw a suggestion of a wonderful supporter throughout the years, Ed Harrell, who had said, "Hey, man, listen, why don't you um, why don't you post the show over the weekend?" Because it gives people more of an opportunity to start throwing in questions now. And that's exactly what I did, and that's exactly what you did. So we're taking your Super Chats, and at the end of the show, well, when we're done with our spoiler portion of the show, um, we'll get to your questions. And we'll start. So if you want to fire those in there, fire them in now. And then by the time we get to the that portion, you can do it throughout the entire show. John, will, John and I will be here until the end of it. So that's it. That's the, that's the setup to the Dune 2 spoiler on the big thing. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere podcasts are found. All right, man, let's get to it. It's the big thing with me and John. Here we go. What's up? Welcome back. Here it is, the big thing. It's me. And John Roca. That's right. John Roca is sending me text guys during the week, and he's telling me about bets we didn't make. And even <laughs> if we had made it, he would have lost because he was saying it's going to make $120 million over the weekend. And I said, I hope you're right, but I think anywhere between 75 to 80, and yeah. domestically, it made around 80. So 80. 81, whatever. Yeah. So either, either, either way, doesn't bode well for you for deadpool when that comes around oh no don't even start man please. Right. but anyway but but the movie did very very well yeah it, it, it crushed at the box office i think it was like 180 overall for yeah worldwide. worldwide yeah pretty incredible and people keep wanting to go back and see it it's been in mm -hmm. my head for have you seen it twice yet i'm gonna see it today as soon as we're done okay. with the show there's a 12 okay. o'clock so it's like 30 minutes of preview so if we're done in time i'm gonna roll over there it's five minutes away because we've got to okay. do a live review tonight on the uh, outlaw nation channel with the geek buddies we're gonna have fun talking about it there so i'm excited to see it in, in the um uh 4x so yeah, yeah, screen. yeah. so i want to go see it there's like two people in the theater too so because this weekend sold out everywhere oh, oh it, was, it wasn't sold out well yeah monday anywhere. i could see monday monday probably be less but once you get yeah. to nighttime showings i bet you it's going to start packing exactly. out a little bit more and you know i think that the hardcore fans the people that really wanted to see it saw it this weekend and yeah. then the word of mouth people will start seeing it. the question is how big is the drop off going to be you know yeah. like if, if it was 81 i bet you i i, I think it's going to have a a healthy drop off so okay. I, I i'd say we're looking at like you know probably 45 for for week two okay maybe no, i think word of mouth is going to be strong for this one uh i think a lot of people were maybe hesitant 
are going to go see this thing more than once, and then we'll see what the drop off is. I'm thinking 30 to 40, but yeah. again, I was wrong on the hundred. So, but I mean, we're, we're in the same range. Yeah. We're in the same range for, yeah. for week two. I think anywhere between 35 to 45 is, yeah. is realistic. So yeah. I think, and if it keeps doing these little, those little hits, um, it's just yep. the question is, is it, as we t- said last week, is it going to get cannibalized by its own movie yeah. with Kong and Godzilla? Because you've got Ghostbusters, which could take a little bit off of it mm-hmm. for sure. But it's the Warner Brothers movie the big is the bigger spectacle than other one, which, I mean, I guess they had to because they have more releases coming out. It's just like, yeah. why would you put that in the same month as doing? I just don't understand the, the wait until April, for, the first week of April or something. Yeah. Counter programming, I guess, on their own stuff, yeah. maybe. You know, I like I said, in December they did the same thing, and it worked out for two out of three, and maybe yeah. it'll work out for two out of three here, but we'll see. Uh, I mean, and like you said, everyone who's going to see these movies, with those three movies, they're going to see it opening weekend, a majority of them. So then it's just going to be about which ones have legs, and yeah, uh, maybe all three of them do. We'll see. Wait a minute, someone said Godzilla is coming in April, not March. That when well, did they, they move it? It's the last. Uh, when did they move it? Yeah, it might be overseas there. Yeah, well, yeah. Let me double check because that's not as of as of four days ago. It was the yeah. end of March. Let me yeah. let me see if that's true. Um, let's see. Congress Godzilla or yeah, Kong, Kong and Godzilla. March 29th, twenty twenty four. So um, this person might be talking overseas. Yeah, it is. A small town. Yeah, it has not moved. It's still March 29th. Yeah. So it's the end of the mar- It's the end of the month for for. Kong and Godzilla that kept it there. So, um, anyway, yeah, this is, guy, I don't like <laughs> Bam, poor guy. <laughs> he very well might be where he lives. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> but no, here in the states, it's coming out at the end of March. Uh, anyway, so let's get into this thing, dude. Mm-hmm. So the, we did. Uh, we wanted to talk to you about it since yeah. you saw it. I had seen it, and then you saw. I think you saw it like, like four hours later. Uh, yes, yes. Dune Part Two. It starts out. I mean, the second the thing starts out. You just know, and by the way, if you didn't already know from the title, this is a spoiler heavy discussion. So if you're here yeah. and you haven't seen Dune and you, you know, oh, spoilers, um, the way that this thing is shot, just to set you up, that it is purely a continuation of this entire story. It's not like 10 years mm-hmm. later. It's yep. If you watch, if you watch this movie as one big long movie, you won't even notice that it's you know, it's it it doesn't jump in time, it's just them moving with the Fremen. Yep. Both uh, Jessica and Paul, and they're moving in the desert. And then when the Harkonnen come after them, and you really get to see, because we've got set up in the first one when Duncan was telling them how great of fighters they are, mm-hmm. right? And you see it. You see them as fighters in little snippets, too. But you really see what they do in yeah. this scene. And it's like, whoa. And even Because even Paul and Jessica are like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like they're supposed to represent, you know, a native culture understands its land more than anyone else and understands where to hide, how to move, how to take advantage of the environment. And you see that happening in the uh, in that fight sequence as well, coming right. out of the sand and all of that coming from the ground, all of that pretty, pretty badass. Um, but still the fear of Paul, the idea of like, OK, what is Cheney doing? What What is Jessica doing? They're still a little bit behind with the Fremen because, like yeah. you said, we're picking up right where we left off. So they haven't been with them for like years and years and years, and they pick mm-hmm. all this stuff. They're still figuring out how to work their fighting within the, their um, the Fremen skills yeah. as well. So they're yeah. just moving. There's there's walking with them to get to the to yeah. get to where they need to go. Just, they almost get left behind, Christian, once the fight starts because everyone's like, "You stay here." Yeah, and then they hold all your own. take care of business. Yeah, yeah hold your own because if you're the chosen yeah. one, you're gonna be you should be okay. And yeah. then even when you have this whole thing with Stilgar, when he's because they finally get to the cave and 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 Stilgar yeah. Stilgar is essentially Morpheus, by the way. Yeah, I mean, hundred percent. He's Morpheus. I mean, in the way that he believes in the prophecy, no one else does. He believes in it, and he's got to keep. Well, I shouldn't say no one else does, but he's got he's got to tell people yeah. that he does. And then, um, and I'm sure Morpheus was based off of Stilgar. Oh, uh, sure. yeah. And when they're in the cave, and then they're like, what are we going to do with the mother? And he's like, well, I got an idea. <laughs> See, it's it's the same thing. It's like if if she survives, and if if she's yeah. supposed to be, if this guy is the Messiah, then the mother is going to live because she's part of the prophecy. Right. So. Get him to the old witch, let her drink the, the worm snot, and then let's see what happens. <laughs> That's what it is, exactly. Yeah. It was it was like, yeah, that whole thing, dude. Like that whole, I mean, every little thing. I saw um uh, our our um you know, you know DJ Woldridge pretty well, yeah, right? Of course. Oh, yeah, so uh, D- no stupid questions, is that what it is? 
only stupid answers. Only and, stupid um, answers. Yeah, so. and DJ, uh, I've I've become pretty you know pretty good pals with with DJ over the last cool. couple of years, and cool. but I I do find myself in the opposite page with him a lot of times, and oh, he yeah. was talking about pacing he's like look it's, it suffers from the same thing that the first one just some of the pacing is i could say self-indulgent whatever you said i'm like dude i wrote back that 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 picture of uh of will farrell it's like i like you man but you're crazy you're crazy <laughs> and it's like what are you talking about the pacing yeah. in this movie is everything the pacing is it because it keeps it keeps setting you up and setting you up in little nuggets here and there and then when they do deliver on those big scenes whether it's in the i mean again just going back to that opening scene when they're picking the harkonnens off and the, and the silence of the harkonnens just yeah. falling off the cliff and then yeah. the big and then the worms coming in and getting rid of the remnants it's like all of that that's pacing in one aspect and then you get the well this isn't just we're not going to just feed you full of action we're going to yeah. feed you with the the, the fanaticism of, of of some religion you know we're gonna like the, the belief the faith of religion yeah. as well and it's like all these different things that kind of played into it um it, yeah I, I i i just think it's an absolute masterpiece i really do yeah it scratches your action itch uh and it also uh, challenges your mind and i like that about the film it works on both levels if you don't want to dive into the themes that they're talking about in the film with religious fanaticism with colonialism all that stuff going yeah. on you don't have to the film works on its own straight up as an adventure film, as a thriller and what have you, and as a film that has twists and turns for its main character. So that by the end, it's almost a tragic ending in a way. And it totally it, is. it's much more bleak than people think that ending. And so, but with, with DJ, I imagine it's because the film didn't hundred percent work for him. The pacing becomes noticeable when right. a film works for you. You never notice the pacing because mm, in true. fact, that's why it works for you because the pacing is good is part of the elements of what work for yeah. you and i agree with you i had no issues with the pacing i mean i was i felt like i was being taken all around so yeah. that by the end i'm like oh shit i wish there was 15 more minutes of this ride you know it, it's well because great. i felt the world was all the worlds were yeah. real as you I said know. you're getting taken on these adventure every time what is, is a ship and it and the reason why i think a lot of people have been comparing it to like game of thrones because it feels episodic right it feels like yeah, yeah. you're you're you'll be with paul and his mom and the fremen for a bit for a while and then you're with the Harkonnens. You're right. on that. You're on that planet. You're not even. You're. You're with the Emperor's daughter. Daughter, like yeah. setting up the fact that um, that Fade is. It could potentially be yeah. the Messiah, and it couldn't be uh, Paul. So, and then, and then you set up that entire thing with the Harkonnen arena, which is just that could that could have been self indulgent. Yes. That could have been. And I, like like oh, what are you, you just show me how cool you can film stuff. It all made sense on how that was supposed to play, and that was the time to go to your pacing issue no. when i was sitting in the theater i'm going right now i'm like this movie's got to be two hours long so far and i'm going but there's so much more to tell i'm like it's got to <laughs> be a three-hour movie i'm like it has to be and i wanted it to be because you've heard me many times going why are these movies so long yeah, like right. when they don't need to be i was like this movie needed to be this long because of the story it was telling yeah, yeah the scope of it and the yeah. size of the story for sure and you're right the the, the black and white sequence with the in introduction of fade ralph i thought was great because it also weaved in the story about how they've been using the Atreides mm. family, how yeah. little they think of the Atreides family right. by having these last three that are remaining, almost gladiator-like, like we see at the end of Gladiator, get stabbed, get poisoned, so that it's an easier kill for Fade Rautha. And the twist to have uh, the Lord Harkin in there uh, not drug one of the guys to show what he can really right. do is a nice twist within that story, or within that section of the story, which makes it super interesting to watch how that's all going to play out. You know, and I had said this as I was finishing, as I finished the second one and I did my out of the theater and I did my review on it, I said, I'm going to guarantee you that when you watch the first one now, not only does the first one elevate the second one, the second yeah. one elevates the first one beyond I Have you watched the first one since you watched the second yesterday. one? I watched it yesterday in the afternoon. We watched it just for fun and I'm like, damn, this is so much more richer having seen the second so one. Because sure. that guy you're talking about that fought Fade is in yep. the ship with them when they're going to the planet before he right. gets before he gets captured and you see him you see him in in that scene you're like oh that's the guy i'm like all right there's that there's that moment there's little things she jessica even says to um what's the the, the, not the grandmother or whatever it's whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she says to her after she tests paul and paul survives with the, the box she says that jessica says we've been we've been crossing bloodlines for years yes yeah. And like when you pick, when you go back now, if you've seen the second one, you're like, shit, like, because Paul is 
Harkonnen. He's a trade. Right. He's part of the Benny Jesuit. He's so he's he's got that's exactly what she said. We've been crossing these bloodlines for a reason. Yeah. yeah. So and because he he was crossed was where Fade wasn't. Fade's just right. pure pure Harkonnen as, right. as far as we know. Awesome Butler is next level in this movie dude i mean listen make fun of all the accent and all he can't get rid of all that nonsense make fun of all you want i think he looks i think he was fantastic here right. and seeing yeah. that new trailer for the bike riders <laughs> looks like he's see, he, yeah. he is just going now moving past elvis completely and embracing this path you know there's some actors that get the shot then they fumble the ball don't quite pick right. the right projects right. and there are some actors that understand the right projects and get called to be in them and really step up to yeah. the plate and he has done it here, and I imagine he'll do so in bike riders as well. Yeah, I thought the three standouts to me were Zendaya, mm. um, Austin Butler, and then obviously Timothy Chalamet, who yeah, Timothy Chalamet is an, is a movie star. I mean, the guy's a movie star, and he like because when you first see, I remember the first one, and people were like, "Oh, this guy's not going to be able to be Paul Atreides and be a realistic leader." Bullshit! Like because <laughs> like, because you a different actor with that scowl, and you're like, "Cause look." I am I'm a big Leonardo DiCaprio fan now, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. When he was coming up, I was like, all he does is scream. And I'm like, and it's not an intimidating scream. It's like it's, it's like slap whiny. that kid. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. whiny. But but now but now now he's it, since departed. I'm like I'm a massive Leo fan. But it took him yeah, a while yeah. to grow into it. Agreed. With Chalamet, I'm like, no, that scowl. You could have played that up and be like that kid with the hood on. I'm like, where's that Jedi Sith <laughs> turn been? I'm like, where's that been? And I saw somebody. I was writing. Because uh, I I had said it was the best kind of he, uh, Sith heel turn, uh, dark side turn, and people like that. Not people. One guy was like, "That's not that wasn't a dark side turn. There is no bad or good." I'm like, "What are you talking about?" He became exactly <laughs> what he said he what he was worried about. I can't go to the south side of this thing because this is what's going to happen. It's like he saw yeah. there were. It was like the Doctor Strange moment where it was like I see all these alternate things, but there's only right. one way out of this thing. And he went and he just he he became the thing that he didn't want to be and he, right. he, he takes the emperorship yeah. he takes the emperorship yep it's yep. like he's 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 gone he's gone rogue guys he's yeah he's, he's dark side that's what i'm saying it's it's a much more depressing finale than people think and that's why they kind of have a shot of uh who is coming next from jessica's loins and what her role is going to be in the next one but i agree with you to me i compare dicaprio and chalamet because Chalamet has spoken about how DiCaprio has been a mentor of his and kind of guiding him through this land of Hollywood and stuff. Um, DiCaprio is Tom Brady and uh, Chalamet is Patrick Mahomes. That's essentially it. A I guy who comes in yeah. Yeah. who seems to be way more mature beyond his years, get the game way beyond his years and immediately understands what to do in these situations. And so he's been successful at a much earlier time in his career than DiCaprio. Oh, although DiCaprio did get nominated for Gilbert Grape, I'm with Christian like, Yes, he's good in Aviator. Yes, he's good in these other films. But it isn't until Departed that mm -hmm. he actually makes that jump. And you're like, okay, holy shit, this guy. Yeah, everything since then. Please. Everything since then, I'm just like, he, I, he, his yeah. his stuff is must-watch for me now. I exactly. Like, okay, I didn't dislike him, but I was just like, I don't believe this guy when he's trying to be intimidating. Or, right, right. But now he's one of the greats, right? And Chalamet is, I, like you said, a step up to where he is just kind of fine. I mean, look at this kid. He already had... Yeah. All the movies that he's been in, when, whether it's the "Call Me by Your Name" is the one that really I think that, that that's what it was called, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. "Call Me by Your Name" the one uh, that one was the first one. You're like, well, who's that? Who's that kid? And right. then he he was I mean he was already with Greta Gerwig and in Little Women, Little Women, really yeah. That, um, but Wonka last year, but he made five hundred million dollars, yeah, or or more. I think, I think, made, yeah, I think, I think so. six yeah. or something, whatever it's made. And then you're gonna get this one. Mm -hmm. He's been in kind of back to back big movies and he yep. is a bona fide movie star and you saw what what he brought to paul atreides and and it was like and i say this with as a as you guys know like i've been a i'm uh, i'm i've just been, i've been harder on on star wars recently because i just don't feel like they have they don't have this kind of vision at all right wow. and when you look at even even when you go back to the prequels and we've always talked about how anakin's turn when you look at He's just like he the the purpose of why he goes, but then out of nowhere, he it's just like okay, now I'm Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. Um, where you see Paul Atreides is fighting these urges, he's yep. fighting this whole thing to where and his mother is pushing him. His mother is almost right. like the emperor to where she's like, You gotta do this, you gotta go there, and she leads him to drink. You know, once he drinks the blue, it's over. Right. And then Shawnee is is and this is why I thought. 
there's one look at the very end after he beats Fade, and she looks over, and she, uh, it was Zendaya that is, and she's just like, "Well, this is everything we talked about, yep. and and, uh, and that ain't the guy anymore." Right. So I'm yeah. out. There's a tragedy in that, right? And she's the yeah. one that won't uh, bend the knee. She won't bow down to him. She won't do anything because her connection to him is different than everyone else's connection to him. She has seen him struggle against this impulse. And once he gives into it, she realizes, all right, the man I loved is no longer there anymore. He is going to walk his own path and I am going to walk my own path. There wasn't a crying, breaking down tragedy. No, she's like, I get it because I'm a hard edge, badass bitch. Right. And I can't be part of this anymore. I'm getting the fuck out of here. So I which thought is, that was awesome. Which know? is awesome. But you know, yeah. it's what this is the thing is that it shows that there are times mm -hmm. there, at least in my opinion, there are times when the creator of the movie does something different than the book. Oh yeah. hundred percent. And, and it works because in, in the book, Johnny goes, okay, I guess I'm just going to be, I'll be the, the, the side lady. Right, right. And she, she doesn't walk away. She right. stays, she stays with him and she stays loyal to him. Yeah. And I think for the narrative that Denis set up, this was more fitting. hundred percent. Um, yeah. It worked in the book from, and from yeah. what I, again, from a lot of the stuff that I was reading about, but like this, but the continuation of it, obviously from the, one of the most beloved sci-fi novels of all time i think that yeah. i started watch i also started watching the david lynch movie after oh god too. oh yeah and i just well more so not, not, it's not fair it's not fair to compare them from the 1984 movie to, to, to kind of technology and everything different directors have. too lynch is a very different, different but i was looking for more so like what story elements they took mm. right and certainly i mean they show the emperor right up top in the 84 yeah. version i like that they teased it um and what walk and like because they didn't and you and i talked about this they didn't over nope. walk in him it was perfect i'm gonna walk him. yeah it was just just enough because he wasn't like well paul oh it's like because the problem is this so, so many people get right it's a worm get it get it. it's so many um who plays your daughter florence <laughs> sure. Sure. and it's but the, that's the thing is everybody has an impression of walking yeah sure and the problem is that now when you see him you don't see the great actor you see the impression yeah 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 yeah. and it's not fair to him he's a which is which is why i did the super bowl commercial i thought which was great right. yeah right yeah. he was also really great in um in uh was it succession not succession uh what's the one that what's the one from uh ben stiller the one i love the oh, oh yeah um severance yeah severance. Yeah, yeah thank you yeah. um he was great in severance yeah he was great in severance but anyway he's really the emperor he it's the emperor is not supposed to because you know you think of the emperor right away and you think of okay you're gonna get a you're gonna get a palpatine you're gonna get all these types of yeah just really evil thing and he's just manipulative is what he is yeah yeah, yeah. He just he he the the quench for power and what he's got to do and the things that he's been trying to maneuver with the harkonnens and i love what they did with batista yeah that he's just a big screaming bully yeah he's not he's not he's not that tough i mean brolin whoops his ass you know at the end and then he's he runs away from paul because he's scared out of his mind fade slaps the shit out of him yeah. so it's and fade yeah there's so much to talk about but you can you can pick one of the things you want <laughs> i love it so much. yeah I, I do enjoy the emperor if you if you guys get a chance to watch the cast on uh jimmy fallon uh austin butler does a great christopher walken impression oh, talking he? about because he was nervous about doing snl yeah and walk until you gotta do it just read the cue cards. You're fine. And so you, you, just a simple advice, and it's great, and he does a great impression of him. So you understand there was a lot of um, uh, respect for him, right? And I agree with you. The perfect amount, as we texted about, perfect amount of walking, because when you got someone like Florence Pugh, you don't need to put a lot of walking in there. You need to let her take the lead in this particular area of the story, and I thought she did a great job with it. And at the end, he's defiant as fuck, right? Like, yeah. at the end, he's like, yeah, I did it. I fucked your dad over. Let's go. And um, he takes care of business with Fade, and it's, right. it's Florence who... Uh, seeks mercy from Paul in for her for the emperor, and so you see that connection. So I love the way that they, they weaved all of that in um, to see uh, what we're going to get here in the future going forward with Florence uh, in the next installment, which will be which a lot of fun. Is, for, which I've named it five different times every time yeah. I talk about it. <laughs> um, it is Messiah, not prophecy, not legacy. It's Messiah. Um, and dude, I, dude isn't this also incredible, Christian? Yeah. Like when you watch this, you and I, you know, and uh, you, you're younger than me, but like. We see now there's a new crop of these really exciting, fun young actors that are really bringing an incredible amount of talent and weight and, dare I say, gravitas 
to their performances here consistently, whether it's a franchise film or an independent small film, Florence Pugh, Anya Taylor-Joy, Timothy Chalamet, yeah. Austin Butler. There are so many of these actors that are going through here now. Right. That it's like yeah. exciting now again. You know? Yeah, it, it is. And I think that, it, and that's where, and when you look at some, look at Zendaya, right? Like she's, mm. she's mm. got that movie Challengers coming out. Yeah. Is coming out and that that movie because of dune now will have more excitement on it she already had it from sure. um uh, i didn't watch euphoria but everyone like loved that, that. and like and she, i thought and you know what's funny about her is that when she was in the the first spider-man when mm -hmm. i saw her right. and i was like oh this is just kind of like an emo they're trying to make her just oh, i'm too cool mj type thing i'm like i don't know and then it's the second movie that i'm like oh wait yeah that's yeah. there she's she is putting such a she, like a there's like a, a shield up for yep. this girl and you see that because of the performance like oh i, I like her and yeah. then the last one even more so but she's this movie was the one that i was just like yeah this is a, another superstar here she's yeah. a superstar and i can't i'm actually way more excited for challengers the, tra the trailer looks really good yeah but i'm way more excited now because i keep seeing what she is capable more every time she puts in a performance mm -hmm. um but the chemistry between her, I, I saw some people saying they didn't think the chemistry was there, and I was like, I don't, I don't know what the what they're watching. I thought it was yeah. so like because there's these moments like when they're in the cave, and like it's we've all been there. Anybody in relationship has been there. You're in this, and you're whether it's your you're doubting yourself for a second, or you get into a conversation. There's like this brief little argument to where she says to him, she's like, well, you're not fremen, and he's like, well, wait a minute, I thought I was. And she's like, well. You are, but like, right? You know, like they have this conversation. Like, she realizes what she says real quick, and she's got that kind of thing up. And then she's like, "No, I love this guy." And you know? let me tell you what I what I really mean. And and I'm worried. I'm. It's like you get all of that, and right. it's even why Denis Villeneuve kind of backtracked on his dialogue comments. He's, yeah, he's like, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Backtracked on it because he's master of dialogue. He's a master. <laughs> and when he said that, he's just like, oh, "I hate dialogue." He was saying it in kind of like a joking manner. Yeah. And you know, there's like, you can't say anything. With, especially when you're one of these big movies coming out when people yeah. are going to dissect every little word you say but like the dialogue in this movie is chef's kiss man yeah agreed man there's so yeah. much that you get invested with these characters because of how the dialogue goes uh is laid out and how the uh, it it uh, uh, foreshadows and then shows you the twists and turns that are happening are going to happen with these characters i mean you know yeah. Rebecca Ferguson was stellar in this movie, but I know she's killing it on the oh, talk yeah. show. We didn't talk movie. about her yet, yeah. really. And everyone yeah. wants to like, you know, find out who this co-star is. But mm -hmm. don't forget that this is an actually incredibly great actress. Yes. Who has this confidence to her. And it's great that she told that story because this is a person who has been on a journey here from when she was starting mm -hmm. out, had a kind of a situation here for her that was really tough. But now you see that no one would fuck with Rebecca now. And she's very calm and speaking her truth and speaking her peace and having her play this character that you really like her. But then you see these twists and turns. Yeah. And you're like half cheering for her and you're half afraid of her, which I like half, that as a character. Half afraid of her. Yeah. Uh, she's terrifying. <laughs> in the she's terrifying in this movie because you know what's funny yeah. about it? No one's really talked about this. And maybe I read it wrong. Maybe mm -hmm. I read it wrong, but I, I could have sworn. Yeah. When they're in the cave at one right afterwards and Jessica doesn't really know kind of she's kind of lost before she goes and, and drinks yeah, yeah. Something. and Paul's the one who says we got to we got to make them believe that I'm the Messiah right he right. tells her because we got to make them believe that I'm the that I'm the, that I'm the one whether he believes it or not he says we got to make her believe and then from there on then she starts to do it and yep. say and he's like you're doing it through fear you're doing whatever you're doing it through because once she, well, both of them once they drink that thing She's the first one to go. She's the yeah. first one to go to the she she starts yeah. like the way that she absolutely does it. And she's not like slapping anybody around, but she's manipulating and she's doing and she's pushing the right mm -hmm. she's pushing the right candidate. I mean, right. it's not it's not a it's not a false prophet. This guy is yeah. this guy is the he's the goods, but like they got to make some sacrifices in order to get it done. Yeah. And I love and even the ending, dude. Like when they when they all show up and I'm like, okay, how long is this gonna be kind of dragged out from this fight? It's like not long at all they come in and wreck shop yeah, absolutely man Destroy. it's so it's so good yeah that's why it feels like the film itself is a two-hander with jessica and paul on the in um, having similar journeys within their own respective storylines yeah right because remember she was i think she was like part of the harem for paul atreides father yeah. uh, and then has the baby with him and which is paul and so we see that and so she's climbing out of being underneath the queen mother and 
taking her spot in essence by yeah. the end of the second film oh. and same thing with him he's kind of stumbling figuring himself out by the end of the film he has reached this higher level so both of them are on their respective journeys hers is she's very clear about what she's doing he is a bit not sure and then by the end they're both uh, standing atop the pyramid in power you know? can i can i bring up a a, a personal moment with you that i could i could have i felt i could feel the emotion going through you when i sure. watched it Sure. When you when you combine the first movie when Paul's father says to him, you know, you'll find your way. Yeah. And then he has the sand and he goes, I found my way. Oh That's, man. Right? It was like, am I right? Were you like Yeah, that? oh yeah. yeah. I, was like, I, I went like this. I was like a 10-year-old. Like, Motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> right? Cinema. And I was no. like, this is perfect. It was yeah, so yeah. good. There's so much. There's so many other moments that we're going to keep talking about. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, make sure that you put the uh, your questions in there. I've seen so many of them come in. So we're going to get to yeah. all of them. We'll make sure that we get to them and, and get all your questions. We want to hear them. They don't have to be about Dune. If you guys want yeah. to ask other things, that's fine. But if you want to talk about Dune, there's things that we miss. I obviously want you guys to bring those moments up. Um, before we move on, I want to tell you guys that I'm excited to tell you both about Rocket Money and BetterHelp. Rocket Money, I've been telling you guys about Rocket Money forever because there's a lot of times that you forget about these subscriptions and you either pay twice for it, you didn't realize it, you sign up for a thing and you're like, oh, I'll do that first free month and then it's gone. You, you, your money's gone every month. Did Rocket Money do what you wanted them to do for you when you signed up because it did it for me i had all these subscriptions and i was like oh and it lists it out and it says don't do that you don't need these it tells you how much money you have uh that you've spent in the month it tells you it, it gives you your credit score it gives everything i mean rocket money for me is the way to go it's a personal finance app um yeah, right. And yeah, and it finds and it cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps lower your bills, which is the best. So you can grow your savings because Rocket Money has, has over 5 million users and it saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions. That's great. <laughs> wow. Saving members up to $740 a year. So don't waste money. Don't do it. And you don't have to. You don't have to waste the money. Cancel your unwanted subscription and go on over to rocketmoney.com slash big thing. Rocketmoney.com slash big thing. Um, also, want to tell you that this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Now, I've also told you guys about BetterHelp. So, I don't know. I'm going to ask you guys, how, how do you think, realistically, what's your social battery like right now? Is it drained? Is it bursting with energy? You got to have boundaries. You got to know what you're capable of, right? And it can be easy to ignore our social battery and spread ourselves too thin. John knows it. I know it, especially with social ga gatherings and picking up after the winter. So what's the right amount of socializing? What it, For me, I got to do it the right way. I got to make sure that I have my battery recharged. And I also got to make sure that what I'm doing for, for work, I do the same thing. I just like take a break. Um, and I've talked about it many times in the show. Roxy Stryer has benefited ma many, many ways from better help. And so has uh, a few people in my family. And I would tell you, for your social sweet spot in general, go to BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash big thing today and you can get 10% off your first month. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash big thing. Highly recommend it. It's worked wonders for people in my life that I love. Yeah. Uh, better help sponsors, the geek buddies as well. I love them. They're a great sponsor. They're fantastic people. And, um, you know, having gone through therapy myself and seen the value of therapy, um, I can't recommend it enough and we all need it. Break the stigma. We all need it. Um, yeah. it's important. Uh, it, there's no shame in it. Uh, and you never know what you can find out about yourself um, when you kind of open it up a little bit and, and work through some of the issues. And you might find more success in your life. And isn't that what we all want, really, in our world? So That's 100% yeah. right. Um, you know, I wanted to jump to another moment that, and we can we can talk, if, even if we covered it already, John, I would talk about like our favorite, like some of the favorite moments that we have. Yeah. And one of my favorite moments, and I think it's every, a lot of people's favorite moments, is that when you have that moment in the first movie, when you know the the grandmother again i forget what they call her but like she's got paul's hand in the box and she just like 
he's like, how dare you use the voice on me? And she <laughs> kind of looks at him, right? And she's like, oh, there's something about this kid. And then when she calls over to him at the end and he goes, silence. And she's yeah. like, whoa. It's like, it's like <laughs> you ain't messing with this kid anymore. Nice try. Take your box and shove it up your ass. Because <laughs> that moment you're like, wow, this is, this is next level stuff. And I love the way Fade looks at him, by the way, too. Because Fade, yeah. when Fade beats the the older uh our, our trade um tradies guy right yeah uh right, what's his face yeah yeah, yeah. he beats uh, all yeah right exactly yeah and then and then of course takes care of batista pushes him out of the way takes his spot yeah but it's like it's, it's but he, when he beats that first guy and he says you fought well you know mm -hmm. to the guy and then yeah. when he he fights with this kind of maniac thing where it's just all it's all about the fight it's all about yeah. the thing and because when when paul is beating up the baron yeah yeah, you fade doesn't give a shit. Right. Fade's just in the back going, "All right, nice job." <laughs> yeah, get him out of the way. Get him I, out I of the way. To, it moves, yeah. helps me out. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. He's well, like, "What? Then just what do you like got?" Empire. Just yeah. like the Empire. No one's trying to stop Vader from force choking people. Okay, I get to move up. Great, I move up. Or yeah, I'm or good. Uh, Moff Tarkin. You know, I get to move up. Fine. Yeah. You know, well, it's like it's like what uh what Brolin says in the beginning. You don't know Harkins. They're brutal, right? It's like that whole thing, like where he's you see them even when he's like yeah i'll i'll, I'll fight you and he's like yeah. cousin that's interesting he didn't see that coming he's like, yeah. let's do it and then that battle because i'll tell you i didn't know the book end right, right. Know the book yeah. end. so yeah. i all i knew was that people were going this is the empire strikes back of uh of dune and i'm like yeah. holy shit paul could lose this fight right because right. when they're talking about what i'm like i don't think he's gonna lose but i could see it and right. then when he gets stabbed i'm like holy shit is he gonna die I'm like, no, they're not going to do that. You're not going to kill him. Right. And he doesn't, but I wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Because the way that they shot that whole thing. Um, yeah. So that's, those are some of the moments that pop out to me. How about yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love those moments um, as well. I love the, um, when she drinks the spirit, the goo, whatever you want to say, the, the, the worm mucus or whatever, when she drinks it the first time and where she goes and the visions that we see, all that stuff I really enjoy as a director watching what he can create as an alternate reality in a person's mind and perception of what they're seeing. I love those scenes. Um, as we talked about the battle sequence there, introducing Fade Rautha, I thought that was great. And then the fight yeah. scenes at the ba the massive battle fight, or sorry, massive battle sequence at the end. That was excellent. As scope-wise, excellent to see yeah. all of that happening, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed. So yeah. Those are uh, some of my favorite scenes uh, for sure. And then the Cheney uh, Paul stuff, well, those quieter moments when they're having conversations about their future. Conversations Dick, Dick Cheney's in the movie? The Dick Cheney, exactly. Chani. Don't shoot me in the face. Um, <laughs> and then, and then uh, I like that Ch Ch Chani had her friend, right? Her friend there who was like questioning her and questioning the situation. Yes. And then she sacrifices right. herself to allow yeah, them yeah. to be able to leave. Yeah. I thought that was a great. They didn't do. A, they didn't do do backstory. You got it. You got she it. Connected. She cares, yeah. and she well, sacrificed herself like a warrior at the end, which I thought was. It's great. funny because you look at something like uh, not. I don't want to pile on the movie, but you look at something like uh, um, what was it? Um, uh, Captain what? Captain Marvel. No, when there was like uh, the that. Marvels, the Marvels. Yeah. The, right. Sorry, the Marvels. So when the I think there was like there's a, a some there's one of the villains in there that you just yeah. like. Who is that? I don't even know who that was. That the movie? Maybe was it the Marvels? No, there's one particular. I can't remember what it was. Shoot, okay. there's, a, there's one movie that they you're you're supposed to care about this villain or something. It gets in a oh, shit. What movie was it? I can't remember it was, but some <laughs> can't remember it was. But there's some villain that popped in recently, and I'm oh. like, who? I'm like, why am I supposed to care about that person? I don't even know who that is. Is it? Like, is it? Oh, it was Aquaman. It was Aquaman two. Oh, Aquaman okay. two. Okay. Aquaman two was, and the, like they set up this this villain. Of uh, with this woman, she's in it for like uh, she's one of the the the, the bad oh, guys. Yes. Yeah, they you're like, you're like who even, is that? Yeah, they don't even tell you who she is. Like who, she's running the ship. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, who is that? And yeah. then there's none of that in this movie. In this movie, it's like even the side characters. Are, oh, that's who that is. Right. Okay, right. like you said, the friend. It's like they to set up enough moments that when you're like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. well, there's a reason why because it takes her a second. And there's that whole great moment, and you know, with with the Fremen when they're mm -hmm. given Paul his name. You know, yeah, and and he's and he's he's standing on the line and he's going through and they're and they're hugging him. And it's like all that build up and watching them fight and watching like this is there's just so much to it and like you cannot. That's why I can't. When people say what movie do you like better, one or two, this is one movie. Yeah, yeah. 
this is important. This isn't two movies. It's just like, it's like you can call it part one and part two, but it's like first half, second half. It's it's what it is. I think he shot them in his mind as one movie. Yeah. And then like took the break, obviously, in between so they could edit and put the first part out. But I think he shot them all as one movie in his mind. Kind of like Tarantino with Kill Bill. That's all one movie in Tarantino's mind. It was Weinstein who came in and cut it up and made it a part one and part two. But in essence, he shot it like one movie. And so I think that's what you have here. It's one book. This is like it's the same in the same way that like uh, I don't know Harry Potter, the last the Deathly was it Deathly Deathly Hallows? Hallows, Yeah, it's one book. It's like one and two. It's it's just it's you just can't put out a a six hour movie unless you're Martin Scorsese, you know. But (laughs) but it's like this is it's a six it's a six hour film, and I I I, I'm going to I'm when this comes out on digital or whatever I'm going to watch it. I'm going to block off six hours of my day and oh, I'm going to sit on my couch and I'm going to watch the whole damn thing in one That's shot awesome. because it's like the first one just keeps getting better and better for me mm-hmm. and my, so much for so that my whole family is saying you're obsessed with this movie stop it um I was trying to get my wife to watch it and I was like okay I can get my wife to watch it. We we're laying in bed watching it the other night and she watched the first and I was like okay you want to watch it again with me and then my daughter because she loves Timothy Chalamet it's like I want to watch it too and then I said to my wife last night this is this you're gonna like where this goes <laughs> Okay. But it doesn't end well for Dune. Um, I said to my wife, I go, I, I'm pretty much giving up on Dune. You're not going to watch it. She goes, I hate that movie. She's like, I'm not going to watch. I hate that movie. And I said, what do you want to watch? She's like, I want to watch the first Roadhouse. And I go, perfect. I said, forgiven. Forgiven. <laughs> forgiven. And we started watching the first one. She watched the trailer for the Hall uh-huh. one after we watched the first. Because we, we're going to finish up the, the original um, yeah. tomorrow, uh, tonight. But... I showed her after we watched the first 45 minutes or whatever it was of Roadhouse, we watched the new trailer. She's like, I hate that trailer. <laughs> what? Because she's like, why are they trying to redo the 80s? You can't redo the 80s. She's a big protector of the 80s. And yeah, so. Fair points. I yeah. respect that, actually. Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> um, so there's. Yeah, dude. Uh, I'm trying to think like there's just so much that, you know, inside of this thing of where. I mean, how great was Javier Bardem? Yeah, Still Bardem was, I mean, I was watching a. Yeah. Did a that. Um, thing on i think it was gq one of those uh, youtube videos where like you know they do the google where they go well have you about them this or that such an affable sweet fun yeah. guy who gets it and respects and loves and is humble about his abilities and then when you see him in a role like this because i mean mm-hmm. bardem as you saw in no country for all men can be quite chilling when he's playing a villain but playing a character like this is so interesting for him because this natural vulnerability that he has comes through and the way he cares about paul the way he sees Paul in a certain way. And everything Paul does is seen through the prism of, well, he's the chosen one. So therefore, this is the way it's supposed to be. And even when right. things fall apart, oh, it was supposed to go that way. And so to see someone of this powerful character mm-hmm. surrender himself to Paul, I think it was such a smart choice to cast him. And what he was able to bring to the role yeah. as it goes along in the second movie here, I thought was great to see. Everyone's talking about Austin Butler, but Bardem and Jessica, uh, both of them, Bardem and uh, Rebecca Ferguson, deserve a, a lot of conversation as Brolin well. Roland too. Yeah, I Roland. Mean, yeah, I, right. I, I mean, I, all the performances, man, like they were yeah. really, really great. And I Young think that- Pop. Yeah, what you're talking about with Javier Bardem um, is the same thing that I thought Lawrence Fishburne brought to Morpheus, right? It's like it's it's the belief. It's the belief in something so strong that you'll just – it it elevates you and it elevates your purpose Mm -hmm. and because of the belief. I know the difference is in in The Matrix, you kind of see where it it, kind of tests him a couple different times Mm -hmm. where he doesn't know if it's going to – like. I don't think that Stilgar's ever – ever doubt well and yeah. that's what allows him to become what he becomes yeah so in a way it's a commentary on how religious fanaticism yes. can blow up in your face when everything this person you've chosen to be the messiah does is seen through the prism that that's what's supposed to happen rather than having doubts about this person and you can't have doubts when you're a religious fanatic no. because that questions your entire makeup as a person and your construct and so a lot of people refuse to question these things and just go along with it, you know? And yeah. so I liked that that was a kind of a subtle undercurrent playing all of it. So that when we got to that finale, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah. You know? And how you was actually very funny in this movie too. Yes. Yes. Like, so um, there's a lot of stuff with, with, with the prophecy itself and just like, you know, yeah. as written, as written, as written. It's like, oh, he's so humble. He's so humble. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. It's like, of course, of course he would say that. Of course he would yeah, say that. Yeah. And then it's like, and everyone else around him going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so, it's, it, like you said, it's just a great commentary on it. But like, 
And then Zendaya and her friend in the background, they're going to believe what they want to believe. Right, right. right. Like, of course, they're going to no matter what, it doesn't matter what they what they say. And it's like, it was such a great commentary in general, and just to watch how that all played out. And then I just, I, it, it just goes back to what Chalamet does, though, man, because like, he doesn't, yeah. he does not want to go. He doesn't want to go. He knows what's going to happen as long as he stays there. Right. Then everything, but they, but that's when Fade comes in, they push him out. Yeah. They, it's like they push him to his destiny and it's yeah. like you know it, it's so funny when you look back at it to where as a fade would just would have would have stayed and like no then the, the emperor brought have probably stayed in power right you know? but right. pushed him out and that's uh and that's ultimately the way it went down but like i that's uh, there's so many different moments i just want to go back and watch i mean even when the, they showed so when winston and i went to see dune the original in the theater in imax i had never seen it in the theater so i went and saw it in the theater about a month two months ago whenever it was yeah. They actually showed um, the scene when Paul learns to ride the worm. Oh, yeah. That's a great scene, man. Great scene. And yeah. it was also a good time for me this time when I had to pay to run out because I had already seen it. But, <laughs> um, but I got back fast enough. But but either way, um, that scene, they showed that, which is also going to allow me to talk about the sound in this movie. Oh, yeah. I've been listening to the score on loop. Mm. Um, the music in this is just Hans Zimmer you talk about magicians with with uh Denis yeah I mean Hans Zimmer it's just like you you can as a composer you can run into the same problem of well that's essentially what you did for this mm -hmm. uh, your, your last five movies it sounds exactly the same he made it seem so linked into yeah. Dune and that world like you know whether it was the that woman the yeah. it's like, whoa and then the other stuff that they do throughout it like this is some really soft music it's yeah. just great yeah 100 percent agree with you and I, I you know people need to and i know some people might get upset about this but people need to start talking about him in the same breath as john williams i mean if you're not yeah. doing that already hans has made just as many memorable scores for just as many memorable movies as as john has and i think yeah. The, I, and it's no disrespect. John is 91. John's been doing so many things. People still want him to do more scores. Yeah. I totally respect it. But Hans is been has been doing yeah, he's, he's the guy. Stuff. He's the guy right now. He's yeah. the guy right now. Yeah. yeah. Him and Giacchino are the one two right now. And I think they're incredible. And of course, the guy who did Joker, who did Joker is coming. Ludwig's right starting now. to make some moves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair yeah. points. So, you know, I'm just saying Hans is uh, he's always delivering. I've never not liked any of his scores for anything he's ever done. Yeah. And I like that he understands the assignment for these epic, massive type of movies, totally. but he can bring the both the subtle stuff, but also the massive stuff over the top. And so I love that. To me, those two are the top two right now in, in the history of film, in my opinion. I know there's Edward, Her uh, sorry, um, uh, whatever, in the past there. But there's like, for me, those two are the guys. There's, there's tons of, of people that we could talk about. Until, it could be a full Bernard two-hour show just on that. But um, so I think that's the majority of stuff that we wanted to yeah. cover for John and I, because there's a lot of chats that you guys have mm -hmm. in there about Dune. So we're not going to be done talking about Dune by a long shot. But that's the majority of stuff that we wanted to discuss. And I'm sure if we did miss things, like I said, Throw in your questions. I saw a bunch of the super chats coming in. We're gonna we're gonna answer all of them. So if you have questions about Dune, there's things that you wanted to hear us talk about that we didn't get to. Throw it in there, and then some other stuff. And speaking of some other news that dropped, I wanted to talk about this thing. Paul Dano, um, with he's talking about superhero fatigue, right? And that seems to be like anybody who's okay. in a superhero movie, people ask us that question, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think he had a great answer. I love okay. the answer. Various people have weighed in on, this is Dark Horizons, by the way. Various okay. people have weighed in on the issue of superhero fatigue with Chris Evans, the most recent one, giving his brief take on the difficulty of doing a good comic adaptation. Recently, Paul Dano, who portrayed the Whit Riddler, was asked by The Independent about his take. He seems to acknowledge that it is real and something of a welcome wake-up call to the industry, but is hopeful someone will come along and give the genre new life. So listen to this quote. Okay. It's an interesting moment where everybody has to go like, okay, what now? Hopefully, from that, somebody either breathes, breathes new life into comic book movies or something else blossoms, which is not superheroes. I'm sure there will be some good ones yet to come, but I think it's kind of a welcome moment. He adds the issue with superhero films is part of a larger industry-wide whole. He said it's a larger thing. As soon as the word content came into what we do, making movies or TV, it meant quantity over quality, which I think was a misstep. And I certainly don't need that as a viewer or an artist. 
Dano adds that he sees the Batman as one of those real films, and it's all about having a great script. There are enough comic book movies where you just know what you're going to get. Reading the script for the Batman, you knew it was a real film. Every sentence, that's just Matt Reeves. Mm. He's been echoing a lot of stuff that we say on this show, and I, yeah. I agree with 100%. It's, it's about quality. And we're, and he's also very smart to then go, well, yeah, but look, the thing that I'm doing is great. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Of course. As, as he, as he should, uh, the thing that I did. Um, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it, he's, I think he's a hundred percent right. I think he's a hundred percent right there. It's just an, it's in a, like anything like Westerns were, were in a, were in a thing and horror was in a thing and sci-fi was in a thing. Everything gets in itself into a thing. The question is, how can you maneuver yeah, yeah. out of it and he's so right that's one of my biggest complaints is when i see a comic movie i'm like okay here we go the paint by numbers thing and what's going to happen how it's going to go they're going to over cgi this going to be a big popcorn go look at the big things blowing up and you just get bored with you numb of it um i loved his comments on it yeah i thought it was 100 right and uh, i i i agree now i do want to destroy the fallacy here that quality over quantity people are that that implies less movies because just because we get less doesn't mean we'll get better it's not correlative right. in that way shape or even if you take all this time to make a movie it doesn't necessarily mean the movie's going to turn out to be great but quality regardless of quantity yeah. i think is is a much more important point of view to have and, agreed and i agree with what he's saying like we need to take a moment or the creatives rather need to take a moment and take a look and see okay what does the public want what is the public uh, pining for, right? Mm -hmm. But also, it doesn't help when legitimately bad superhero movies come out and people create these false narratives about why they failed or didn't do well right. at the box office. And that just gives creatives who have a lesser approach to quality more validity to go to the medium level, to go to the lesser than level and think they don't have to work as hard for it because people are going to come out and patronize it. And I right. think that's, the dangerous part of it as well when you're looking at superhero fatigue if people keep telling you every superhero film cut that comes out is great then that's going to lead to the fatigue because yeah. that's not fucking realistic yeah know? yeah um all right so you guys put your comments in there tell us what you think about that particular comment by dano what do you think um and whether you're watching live or whether you're watching on the replay put your thoughts in there and then i think lastly the one that i definitely want to talk about yeah. here this is an interesting story here and they say that yeah. it, you, did you hear about this i did over the weekend yes so they're saying that depp is wanted back for the next pirates a new report at daniel rpk indicates that disney is very interested in having johnny depp back as captain sparrow for a sixth film in the pirates of the caribbean franchise one key part of the report however says that depp's involvement will be in a supporting role and not the main lead if true, it marks a shift that Disney has stayed away from Depp in recent years after firing him from the franchise. Depp hasn't expressed much interest in returning to the role and vowed never to work with Disney again after that. Then again, sorry, then producer Jerry Bruckheimer surprised everyone in late 2022, telling the franchise that he was, I can't talk right now, telling the Associated Press he was working on a potential Depp return to the franchise. That was followed by news of Chernobyl and The Last of Us show creator Craig Mason coming in on board to write the original Pirates franchise with Ted Elliott. Mason teases the pitch they gave to Disney was the one they thought was just too weird, but the studio wanted it. Depp hasn't appeared in a major studio film since Fantastic Beasts. Um, this is the right play. Yeah, this is the right play. Um, and it's the right play for a lot of different reasons. I think that if there are times, like, look, Mel Gibson's doing stuff, yeah. right? There are a lot of other people that are doing stuff, and it doesn't mean... And if you don't like Johnny Depp, it just means don't buy the ticket. Yeah, that's what it means. Yeah. Um, the franchise needs. It was built on Captain Jack Sparrow, and they yeah. tried to put other projects together without him, and nobody cared. And it would, and they they were they would have had another flop on their hands if they would have went in the directions that they were going to go in. Having him be in the movie also allows you to say he's back. He's going to have a supporting role. Mm -hmm. And then, if it goes well, probably going to have another movie with them, right? If it does well, I think it's a good play. I think it's the smart play. It's the way to it's the way to build to build your franchise back if you still want this franchise. Look, read all the, all the articles you want. None of us were in those rooms. None of us were in those situations. And to me, I look at it as a, a toxic relationship that went bad for both people, mm -hmm. and that's it. And that's what I look at it as. Whatever. 
You want to believe whatever side you want to believe. That's right. absolutely your point of view, just as right. it's my right to believe what I want to believe or what I think happened here. And uh, having been in a few toxic relationships, I know that that is something that you're not proud of, your behavior you're not proud of, and stuff can go wrong because you're pushing each other's buttons in bad ways. But this situation here with um, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, he is synonymous with Pirates of the Caribbean. While he'll st he's still walking the earth, you've got to put him in it in some way, shape, or form because people love him as this character. Right. And you've got to build a quality film around it. People are like, Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie. Listen, let me show you the box office returns of the last uh, five Margot Robbie films before Barbie. It's not positive. So don't right. give me this that people are going to be going crazy for Margot Robbie as this uh, new change in the Pirates. You need him to be an element of it. I love this yeah. idea. I think it's great. Right. Um, and, and someone so, made a good point. Someone made a great point. He's still in the ride at Disney World, by the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Because they know. Everything. Because they, they know. And people look forward to that part of the ride. He's still doing the Make a Wish stuff. He's still yeah. showing up to these to these yeah. clinics and dressing up as Johnny Depp to amuse yeah. these kids who have cancer. So like, there's a lot here that that character has resonance for. Yeah, you know? I just hope they treat him better than they treated him at D23 a couple of years ago when they ushered him off the stage. I was so mad about yeah, that. Wasn't that Comic Con? No, no, it was D23. I oh, remember really? distinctly because okay. he came out eating grapes, and whoever oh, was in charge of Disney at the time yeah, 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 was yeah. like, "Okay, Johnny, let's go." And I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing?" You know, as okay. an executive, who do you think you're more important than this guy? Okay. okay yeah well i mean a lot of things are changing in general so we'll see if, if that's the case how do you guys feel about it do you think it's going to be the move is it going to happen what say you guys um and speaking of what say you guys you guys put in a ton of questions man and speaking of uh, yesterday and all the way through today so we're going to get to all of them and before we do i do want to tell you i'm very excited to tell you guys both um vessi so john i got these i got these new shoes um and they have like it's like rain wear it's really really it's incredible I love they sent it to me a while ago, but I'm so excited to tell them about them. Like the for us, we I want to tell you that Vessi has like this innovative, it's like footwear and it's designed for spring weather. Um, it's great. So Stormburst Vessies are the ones that I really want to kind of emphasize. And they're your go-to for every setting, city streets to outdoor adventures, enhancing your style and activity with ease. So you can, whether it's snowy trails, wet streets, morning dew walks, Stormburst Vessies deliver unparalleled comfort and protection in all your favorite sports spots. So whether you're facing unexpected snow or slippery paths, it's so crucial in general to have these. Like I, I'm planning a move. I've talked about this, but it's been raining a lot in LA and I've been wearing my Vessies everywhere. And I have, and you guys seen it. I've been wearing the one, the, the, the one hoodie that I had that they sent me. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. I love these hoodies. I've worn it on in, in so many different um, videos. They have all weather, all occasion footwear from beach days to snowy communities. They have so many different things. It's fantastic. So um, if you haven't already checked out Vessi, you should elevate your spring wardrobe. You travel with Vessi's Stormburst shoes. You can discover more at Vessi.com slash big thing. Get your pair today and get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to step out into style. It is great stuff. I love Vessi. Really, really enjoy Vessi. So um, I also want to tell you guys uh, about, and I don't know if you guys, I, I think I've, talk, I've talked to you guys beforehand about them but maybe maybe not but i want to let you guys know about our friends over at um at uh oh shoot i can't even talk today today's a day today's a day but i want to tell you i want to tell you guys about roan the points of finding out sometimes what to wear whether it's uncomfortable tight never your size difficulty putting pieces together and when all the fabrics and different textures and the levels of like stretchy so they they sent these pants to, to, to me and I got some for Riley also. And oh, these things are so comfortable because men's closets were due for a radical reinvention. Roan stepped up to the challenge. They have a commuter collection, which is what they what they sent over this commuter collection. And here's some of the stuff that it's inside of this. I mean, that, that was a nice shirt. And this is the one that's really, really comfortable. That I really enjoy. Um, and so Roan, they, it's all about mobility. They have a signature four-way stretch fabric. It's breathable, it's flexible, and it works everywhere from your commute to work to the 19th hole, baby. That's right. Every occasion. They have products for every occasion. You know, talking about the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, polos, blazers. They look great as individual pieces, and they work seamlessly together. 
It's time for unparalleled confidence with all the hassle. Now, Roan's commuter collection features wrinkle release technology and is 100% machine washable. Looking good is that easy. They got this odor free tech. It's treated with gold fusion anti odor technology for more wears between washes. You'll be fresh and clean all day long. So long lingering odors. I got these pants that they sent for, um, and, I, and it just matches so well with the suit. It's it's super. It's just stylish. It's comfortable. It felt good walking around. I felt ten years younger walking around. Um, it's it's you can wear it in every situation. So it can get you through any workday straight into whatever comes next. You head on over to Rhone R H O N E dot com slash big thing. Use that promo code big thing, and you can save twenty percent off your entire order. Twenty percent off your entire order when you head to R H O N E dot com slash big thing. Use that code big thing. It's time to find your corner offer office comfort. Um, yeah, man. So I'm a I'm I'm a big fan of this, of, of Roan and Vessi. Oh, dude, this Vessi should have loved these shoes. Bro, I got uh, I got two pairs of Vessies. Oh, uh, so good. Yeah, they sponsor us on the Cinephiles, okay. and they are fantastic. And you're right about the storm shoes. Yeah. I went hiking in those over the weekend during the rain here in San Diego. Kept my feet dry. Great, yeah. great, great brand. Great quality. You know, they're a little bit on the high side in terms of price, but you get what you pay for, which is a long-lasting shoe, and it's worth it. You know, we all buy those cheaper shoes, and they mm -hmm. trade them in within a year. These are last a long no, time. Good. So, and, dude, I'm telling you, this hoodie that they have. Yeah, oh, I got to get that hoodie, man. The hoodie's great. It's so comfortable. I wear it, I wear it everywhere. Um, okay. So now it's time to get your questions, guys. You guys, have asked, you guys have asked a ton of them. We got a lot of them. So here we go. Here we go. So we're going to start with Ryan's Horizon, who says, I love this movie so much. I have been looping the soundtrack all weekend. I think it's one of Zimmer's best. Yeah. Any particular soundtrack moments in the movie that stuck out? I want to get, I'm going to tell you my, the two tracks that I've been listening to the most. Okay. Um, because I've been, I literally have been just, those are the two. I just keep going back and forth on them. Yeah, there it is. The beginnings are such, beginnings are such delights, I think it's called. Okay. Uh, no, whereas beginnings are such, it's just like, it's cut off from, because it's such a long title. Uh, Beginnings are such delicious. I don't know what the hell it's called. It's delicious. beginning. I don't. It's beginnings are such something. Okay. Yeah. What's it? come on? What is it? Yeah, we'll see. You. Delicate uh, times. Delicate. Beginnings. There you go. Perfect. Times, yeah. Perfect. And then the last one that I like is only I will remain. Those are the two that I've been listening to a lot. Have you been listening to them? Yeah, I've been listening to the soundtrack. Uh, I love the soundtrack. Um, I, I like the music cue with the worm when he's riding the worm. Just the way that the that, 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 the way it increases yeah. in terms of speed and, and and getting you into it and then when she's um when they're in the temple and they're doing the things yeah. they're doing in the temple that kind of quiet subtle thing of menace uh and hopefulness at the same time i think is a fantastic sound cue for me would you say this is one of the greatest science fiction movies of all time oh 100%. Just really? oh, 100 okay. please it's in the top five right now i got uh, it top five wow see, i gotta i gotta see it again but it's yeah. I mean, I know it might be recency bias, but I'm 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 going to be with you there. I think what yeah. they've done with it is just it's uh, like it's just one of those experiences that I, I yeah, it was it was a, it was a powerful powerful experience yeah. watching it. Um, okay, Ralph, here he is. Hey, Prisoner, well. Sicario, Rival, Blade Runner, twenty forty nine, Dune one and two. Denis has entered Scorsese, Nolan, and Tarantino level for me. Long of cinema. Yeah, he's he's in he's in the this this is furthered his his greatness this has furthered his greatness yeah i mean we had a fun time on the recent episode of the hot mic jeff and i doing our denis villanueva, denis villanueva oscars sec segment and so we were giving out best picture best actor best director but yeah all of us and all, there's so many phenomenal films although it's still early in his career which is kind of right. crazy right to think about how we're still early in his career he has had some incredible bangers over the last 10 to 15 years and even the smaller stuff like Eminem's and and his French stuff, which I haven't even seen yet, from right. that everybody says is phenomenal. So I've got to watch those as well. Well, you know what is is about him though too is that there are, as we've mentioned many times over, when we were growing up, there was the movie star that would sell the ticket. You didn't matter like if right. Tom Cruise had a movie, Tom Cruise. You he didn't went. know what the movie was. A new Tom Cruise movie, new Will Smith movie. Now that's the thing with like Nolan. Mm -hmm. um, I think he is now like you and myself and film fanatics were already like that with Denis, but like, yes. but yeah. now he's crossing into after this movie, it's like, well, that guy that directed Dune is yeah. doing a new movie. All right. Yeah. 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 Go see, I'll go see that. That he's, he's entered that territory in the same way that Nolan and, and those guys have too. Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah absolutely. No. And Ralph follows it up. Why should I anticipate anything from Lucasfilm when I have Denis and Dune, the prequel sequels and D plus 
look like child maimed. I'm like, dude, well, here's the difference. The thing is, what I, I think that Star Wars it, it had, needs a shift in how they do things, but you got to understand that Star Wars does have a component where it is me. It's it's a kid's thing too. Yeah. It really is, and it's and they can't go away from that totally. They can't, but they have so much of it that they should do both. Mm -hmm. And Andor was a shift in that. Um, yes. But from what I believe, I believe a lot of people in the creative side of it don't believe in Andor yeah. over there. And I think that that's a mistake. And I think they want to go more into the faster, stronger, more intense type stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think that this proves that you can do both. And I think that Star Wars does need something like this. And it needs something that's not going to hold too close to a philosophy that has changed. So I, I, I think yeah. it can still work. I also think you don't need to shit on Star Wars. I don't mean you. I mean, people yeah. were commenting on this. Like, why the fuck do I need? Like, no, don't. You don't have to shit on Star Wars to enjoy Dune. That's what I'm getting That's at. true. And it's two different. You're serving two different masters. Star Wars is completely different, as Christian said. You have to cater to the younger element. You have to cater to that because that's the that's in the lifeblood and foundation of Star Wars. That is not the case with Dune. It's a completely different, much more mature approach to a sci-fi story. So they are serving different masters yeah. than Star Wars does. Yeah. So you can't compare those two. You might compare quality. That's fair, but not intention. It's two different yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, but I think there's, there's ways to change it up to where you can do something like this. But mm -hmm. you don't have to do everything. See, Dune has the, the Dune's, got one, Dune's one story inside of it. And they don't, they're not doing a bunch of different errors and everything. Right. They will. They're going to do the thing. Wake with me the, up when we see the Harkonnen series on Di or Disney Plus or something. Right. Yeah. But all that's been, the Harkins are probably pretty dark. But they, but they've set up their initial thing where everything can be dark and and more mature, where that's what the world of Dune will be. Right. Um, Star Wars can't do that. It's got to go into different. It's got to do different things. But I think that you could do. A series like this, you could do it and not be so scared of. Well, we need to sell toys, um, and I think that's a problem with that. They're never going to get past. It. It's called um, ZB says young fans grow into old fans. You're right, and guess what happens to the young fans who become older fans? Young fans replace your ass as the young fans while you become older fans. That's the circle of life, my guy. And yeah. for a franchise to stay alive, they have to cater to both sides when they've been well, catering to both sides from the beginning. Well, we're sticking in the Star Wars conversation because Billy Atwood says, who's some of you guys wish could write a Star Wars show? Ooh. Me being such a big Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul fan. I'd love to see what Vince Gilligan could do, not to mention he wrote for X-Files as well. I mean, yeah, I mean, listen, if they said that Gilligan was going to do a Star Wars show. I'd be down. I mean, I'd be down, of course. Um, but I would have the same concern. Mm. Is that is they going to let him, are they going to let him do his thing? Like speaking of Roadhouse. <laughs> like Roadhouse, when when the guy walks in to tell uh, Dalton, he's like, "I want you to clean up my bar." He's like, "I do it my way. I run the show." Like that's what I want. You gotta you gotta give Gilligan the 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 Dalton treatment. You can't say, "Oh yeah, but we need you to do this." No, you gotta let him do what what what's his face did uh, Tony uh, Gilroy. Yeah, exactly. If you is. let him do that, then yeah, of course, I think it would be a great a great choice. So I mean, I'm just gonna steal your your suggestion and say i'd love to see that um but i i think my i, I think where i land with it right now is i really want to see um disney sell lucasfilm i know it won't happen but i really i just don't think that they, i don't i don't think it's working i don't think it's working i don't think that um hmm. i know and i and i and i'd like to i think it needs new leadership i mean whether it goes to apple or whatever it means i think it, i think the whole thing needs a facelift you know i'm still gonna watch and and hope and fingers but i don't think it's gonna really get to the full potential of it could until they sell it and, and just re-gut the whole thing. I don't think anyone's selling anything until it starts losing money. Agreed. And because they keep making the money, Agreed. you know what I'm saying? So, that's the yeah. truth of the situation. I'd love to see Craig Armstrong from Succession get a shot at writing some Star Wars okay. stuff. That would be super interesting to see for me personally. Um, Let's see. Next one. Ralph. Good Ralph. Mm. Dune is the new Braveheart for me. The scene of Paul and Shawnee talking on the sand dune reminds me of wallace and, and murren talking the hill oh, absolutely yeah, it's got yeah. those moments for sure yeah it's like it's like anything else it's got the it is it is a big scale epic yeah. film and it, it does carry the weight of of like what braveheart does for sure 100 percent. yeah um okay richard b gimmons what direction do you see dune messiah taking where does paul's story ultimate go i i have not I, i've I've taken my temptations and I put them to the side because I keep going, oh, what happens in Messiah? I'm like, I don't want to know. Yeah, I don't want to know. I didn't know what happened in Dune and I, and I was better off on it. I don't want to know because it 
yeah, I just, I assume he's the bad guy now. I yeah. would assume. Yeah. And, I, and, and how they're going to, and it's him running as the emperor because there's more books afterwards. His children of Dune. Mm -hmm. Now the question is how, when is Denis going to do the third one? If he's going, I think that they're going to be, Warner Brothers is going to be pounding on his door now of like, yeah. you've, you've got to do the third one. I'm, it's going to be real curious, Christian, because we're in a time now where if you, talk shit about the white male people get super fucking upset and if you take paul down this path of the that i from what i understand he takes in the books it could be a commentary on the, you know coming to power and what you do with that power and how you inflict that power on other people and on people who supported you getting into power so it's going to be interesting how they walk that line to tell this story because he becomes you know not necessarily a good guy so will that happen in this story or will they play the game like they did with Ch with the Chani character right. will they play it where they adjust some of the intentions adjust some of the rules so that he learns the lessons of mm -hmm. why his power goes too far and what he can take from that and of running. course anya taylor yeah. joy's role in all of this as well. well we didn't even talk about her right like, so yeah. we were like i mean it's such a minor role but it's such a powerful role yeah. um because the whole time thing with with her talking to her mother the whole time what yeah. how much like of a role she's gonna have to play and how much longer? I don't even know, Messiah. I don't know the timeline or how long it is after the the second one. I have no idea. I, or, I think yeah, it's a hundred, but I don't know. No, I don't think. I think that's Children of Dune. That's a hundred. Oh, think, yeah, right. Yes, yes I think so, Messiah okay. is closer to the timeline. Okay. Um, and I could be wrong, but that's what I that's what I believe. McKenna Box, do you believe that the Emperor did not come off as powerful as he could have? He definitely was calculated, but I felt like demonstrating his power would have made the Fremen victory more impactful well i think that he did demonstrate his power without seeing him i think in that he he took the harkonnen off of that planet to get him so furious and yeah. get him so pissed off and he set arcades he, he sent uh the the atreides up to fail yeah he set him up to fail and i think that whole structure in general to all of that and built that ultimately creating his own demise without realizing it right but by doing i think that was all calculated i think his personality per se when you saw him not as much and he's a little cowering at the end of it but i think everything he did leading up to it was pretty calculated and uh and, and menacing yeah yeah i agreed agreed oh uh, by the way messiah is 12 to 15 years after okay, yeah so not too far away yeah. yeah okay um mike joyce this you know and real quick before i bring that you said yeah. 12 to 15 years yeah. that gives Denis a little bit of time also yeah. Yeah, 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 he can he say to rush to make it. Yeah. he doesn't need to rush because you know you want maybe you, you want Chalamet to get a little older, you know you want, you, you want him to get yeah. a little older. Was and it boyhood you, film? He's gonna yeah. wait till he gets older. <laughs> no, but I mean, but works. seriously, like because it's like look at look at like uh, like Daisy Ridley is another one. like she's got yeah. that when she comes back now as the wiser Jedi. I mean, it's gonna be like almost ten years since yeah. the last time we saw her, so it, you you believe it a little bit more uh, as opposed to if they would have done it two years and she's supposed to be like it's ten or fifteen years later, right? um okay so mike joyce the scale of death and destruction the holy war brings seems cartoonishly evil absurd to me do you think that denis would scale it back oh that's from the i guess that's from the uh from the from new the one yeah. From the side. Yeah. i i can't speak on it because i don't know yeah i mean all i'd say at this point in the same way i say about james cameron trust in denis trust in denis i agree right 100%. yeah i don't know what this means do you prefer sheets Buzzy Zawawa is that a, is that something that would are we? I think that's a Wawa is like a one of those um uh convenience stores like an oh. AMPM all three of them. I don't know any one of them. I don't know any one of them. Do you know any of them? I uh, know I know the Wawa. I don't know the other. That's John's answer. Wawa. It's been a while since yeah. I've been in the East Coast. Yeah. Shay Markell, what's up, Shay? Shout yeah. out to Chris and the Big Dog Roca. Saw Dune as a family outing this weekend. You guys nice. were right. Outstanding film from Prisoners to Sicario, now Dune to Top Dog. Denis is my favorite director. I think a lot of people are going to be saying that and rightfully so he's um he, he's he's a he's a baller man he really is and i mean that i can't wait i'm excited to see it again i'm excited to see yeah. it again like, and it's a three-hour movie it's hard for me to want to go see a three-hour movie but i'm like i'm mad at myself that i haven't seen it for a second time already <laughs> mike joyce again christian you got to see it again on a real imax screen i know i will i saw d2 in a real imax and again in an imax uh light theater and was far less impressive yeah i i will i'm going to um, I'm probably gonna have to go to the Burbank one to go see it. Mm, right. Yeah, or Universal Studios, right? Either one. Of those. Yeah, but either oh, one. I still got to drive. Yeah, to true. do it because the one near me is it's it's fake. It's fake IMAX. Um, you saw it in real IMAX? 
I saw it in real IMAX for the screening. Yeah, yeah. it was great down here in Burbank. Oh, I mean, uh, San Diego. They didn't, they didn't show. They showed it at a big, a real big screen on the Warner mm -hmm. Brothers lot, but they don't have IMAX. Um, Armada, crossing my fingers for Dune Part One and Two extended editions. He, mm. he said he said they're not going to do it. Yeah, and he already said it because because it, it was what was his, what's the guy's name? Timothy Blake is that his name? The the guy from uh, the Incredible Hulk. Oh, Tim Blake Nelson. Yeah, yes, right. Tim Blake yeah. Nelson. He he had a scene in Dune mm. that got cut. And then he was like, yeah, I don't think that they're showing a, they're going to do extended, but yeah. I did hear there's a lot of cut scenes from part one. I wish we got more action and more time with Paul after transformation in part two. I, to each their own, I think the pacing was just perfect. I really do. I think it's about as close to a perfect movie as you're going to get from one and two together. Yeah. My only um, things in my review was that I wish we had more. And that's, that's the right. thing about positivity. Right. That's a positive. Yeah, right. yeah. Shay Markell again. I got to pay homage to Mr. Greg Fraser. Mm. Dude has had a hell of a run since 2021. The creator, the Batman, and both Dunes. He's he, mm -hmm. he really it's it's you know you're doing something right when you're walking out and you hear people going, "Who shot that, Deacons?" Yeah, yeah. like it's and you like no, it wasn't Deacons. It was Fraser, but that's a compliment. Yeah, if people are confusing your work for Deacons, you're doing something right. Hundred percent. Um, invite Dennis Zen on. I'd love to have Dennis on. <laughs> love, Dennis, Dennis is my boy. I love Dennis. Uh, Dennis is very busy and it's hard for Dennis to get over here. He's making but, his own films. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can ask Dennis though for sure. I love I love Dennis. Dennis is one of my favorite people in the world. He's a great guy. Armada, new Dune free Rome game is being showcased today. Oh, oh that's awesome. Cool. But this gets me more excited too for that series about the Benny Jesuit. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, I can't wait to see that. That's like, and that's like a thousand years before part one or something. Mm -hmm. Like I said, that's like the setup to the whole thing. Yeah um simon section what's up simon saw dune part two really liked it i wouldn't say it's the empire strikes back of the dune series more of a fitting conclusion to part one it's fair and what i'm hearing about dune messiah <laughs> quote luke in the last jedi this is not going to go the way you think yeah yeah, yeah. I, do you know how much do you know about messiah i know that he turns oh, no, 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 but okay it, okay it, it, you, you uh, asked me the question here's no, what I'm, I'm just saying how much do you know oh, about oh it? sorry sorry good point not what do you know right no. I, I know i know enough to understand what happens to his story and to wonder how Denise is going to make that work. That's okay. what I'll say. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Armada. So are the rumors true that Dune Prophecy is a mess. Um, Dune Prophecy. That's that's that's, that's the uh, that, that's my movie. That's my movie. Uh, hope. Well, we all people. know. We all know you like to make up movies, as we saw in movie fights once upon a time. Yeah, a long time ago. Hope Warner Brothers makes more Dune shows, despite the rumors. By the way, Christian didn't tell us I was in, that he was in Shogun. Uh, is there someone that looks like me in Shogun? I guess they're trying to say Cosmo Jarvis looks like you, like the main guy, the main white dude. Oh, really? I, don't yeah. know. I haven't seen the movie. Yet. I haven't seen, seen the show, show yet. Yeah, no, no, I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna watch it. It's, it's been every time I turn, every time I go to turn it on, someone walks into my living room and goes, "What are you watching?" I'll watch something else. I can't do it every time uh next one simon section i appreciate the scene where paul volunteered to carry yes. his body to the freeman burial gun that was awesome yeah that was awesome also it appeared that james was helping paul mm -hmm. in the afterlife yeah did he become dunes obi-wan he absolutely he did yeah that was that was great and then especially even when you go back and you watch the beginning op the opening like um section of when zendaya in part one was yeah. telling him about everything that's gone down yeah. Zombies, zombies is is the one who's he's you see him front and center yeah. shooting at the at the Harkonnen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even in the and the they say Harkonnen wrong in um in the Dune eighty four they call them Harkonnens. <laughs> so the whole time that the Harkonnens they call. It's I mean, I don't know. Maybe maybe it is that's how you pronounce it. I don't know. Maybe maybe Denise saying it wrong. I have no idea. I don't know. Mike Joyce, the beginning of Dune two emphasizes the importance of the Fremen taking water from the dead, and by the end of the film, they're burning bodies. Hmm um yeah i think that yeah, i mean yeah, they they did show yeah, is that but i think there was you remember that the whole thing gets blown up at well, the, the end. understanding is that they took the water from the bodies before they burnt them right and so that's the understanding there because right. they showed you that scene earlier in the they've movie. already done it yeah it's already done it yeah, yeah. uh carlton rudder coppola scorsese spielberg and lucas four legendary 70s directors when history looks back at 2024 Ooh. who will be seen as the legendary directors i mean nolan Sure. Um, I think Denise is going to be in there. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Let's see. Who directed Madam Web? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're jumping because you're, you're legendary 70s. I mean, I would throw in Ridley, right? Because Ridley came in through the 80s and 90s. Ridley Scott's a legendary director, 100%. Tarantino would be seen as a legendary director when we're looking yeah, at Yeah, Tarantino for sure. Yeah, and then, cool. um, yeah, yeah I, I think you have, to, you have to keep going. Yeah, I have to keep looking to see. Yeah. 
it's, it's uh, Greta Gerwig might get in that mix. Not uh, yet. Seeing how she does in the next few films, we'll she's got two. I mean, she's a good, really good director, but legendary status. Uh, she, she's not there yet. Legendary? Is she a legendary director? She's done two. Oh, oh, do you think any of those four directors would have been able to do what she did with Barbie? I mean, I didn't say she wasn't talented. I didn't say no, she I know you're not, I, but I'm saying she's legendary in a different way. And I'm well, thinking, we're, but we're talking about overall. Does she have the potential? Sure. Absolutely. Look, she's Lady a, Bird, Little Women, and Barbie. That's a hell of a lineup to start legendary, off. But dude, that's like that's like ten, let's go. To, let's let's talk about wrestling. Sure. If, if somebody who's coming at this, would you like what Logan Paul has done so far in wrestling mm -hmm. has been? We both agree, incredible. Mm -hmm. Would you call him legendary right now? No. He's had but, some great matches. He's had some matches that people could not pull off and no way been able to, the way he picks up things so fast, the matches that he's had already at a young career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I, I don't no, think that's the right yeah. comparison. I think she's uh, Charlotte Flair or Sasha Banks or Becky Lynch. That's what I think of Gerwig right now. I think they've had longer careers. Oh. I think they, they I, I think, she, I don't think her career is long enough. I think she is potential. I think she has, if she, if she does another movie, the way that she, mm like hit after yep. hit after hit, then she's going to put herself in that position. But I yeah. think it's too young in the same way that I think Jordan Peele well, is fantastic. The question is, who are we going to look back on? And I think, feel, I feel like Gerwig and, yeah, Jordan Peele, those are two directors that I think when Could. we look back by the time they're done with their careers, we will consider them yeah. legendary. Okay, but wait a minute. So Shyamalan, where would you put, would you put Shyamalan as legendary? Too many misses. Too many misses. Right. Yes. Because Shyamalan, but but however, if I don't I, think we're gonna get a lot of your, Oh wait a minute! By your by your standard, what you're yeah. saying right now, yeah. if I would have asked you that question in After 2001, it. then you would have probably said, "No, he's gonna be legendary." No, because I didn't like Unbreakable, and I thought the village was i didn't like unbreakable initially right about signs so later on i liked unbreakable when okay. i understood what it was years people later were called, people were telling this guy yes. next spielberg 100%, 100%. and at that point and then he had doom, doom, doom. so right. all it takes is a couple of misses for yeah. growing peel people go i don't know i, I don't mean, think it's coming i think that they both have really good instincts and i think like i really loved little women i thought it was great i yeah. love ladybird and i appreciate what barbie like as a film Mm -hmm. what she accomplished it just yeah. wasn't wasn't for me but like i think so, that the she she is a she is going to be a legendary filmmaker today standards when it comes to like events because of what she did mm -hmm. but the overall like legacy i don't know yet i don't know um jordan's already had some issues with us and nope so true he's not true. necessarily that's a sure thing that's yeah. what i mean yeah uh, akuma rex saw it in imax yesterday sat in my seat in awe at the credits full same masterpiece can't wait mm -hmm. to watch parts one and two i, I audibly went wow when yeah. i when i was I yeah for sure uh felix watching an imax 70 millimeter was an amazing experience i, I am jealous I'm definitely jealous of that i gotta i gotta check that out mm -hmm. okay Mad Sinister McCall. Great show as always. Harloff, have you ever walked out at a movie because it stunk? Yeah. Also, what jump scare has gotten you best in the theater? There's a, I don't, I have to make it public again. I'm going to start making some of the old Schmoes reviews public again. But there's a, the Sex in the City 2 review. Um, or was it part, it was part, yeah, it was part no, two. Two was the shitty one. Yeah, yeah. it's part two. Um, Ellis and I walked out of that one. Um, it was like, it was my, one of my favorite stories ever. I was watching it. And hold on a second. Wait a minute. Well, yeah, I think solder. Oh, we'll get to that. Let me just do something here. Um, just filming. See, here, John, you take talk about your experience real quick as I send this text. Hold on. Okay, sure. I uh, walked out of a movie because it stunk. Yes, I've walked out of a few of them. Um, I've never finished Batman and Robin to this day. Uh, after they have the motorcycle scene with Alicia Silverstone, I'm like, this is fucking stupid. And I walked out. And I've never gone back. I've never watched it. I've thought about doing a quote unquote first time watching of that movie on the channel, but haven't done it. I walked out of Turner and Hooch. I thought that was terrible. I would have walked out of the snowman, the Fassbender film. If it wasn't for a review, we were doing a collider. I was dying watching that movie uh, and jump scares. I would say I've had a couple of jump scares in the theater that have stayed with me. Certainly in it, when that scene with the projector in the garage, when he starts to get big, I fucking jumped to the top of the ceiling of the theater uh in that uh sequence there with the jump scare that scared the living hell out of me uh glenn close popping back up in fatal attraction scared the shit out yeah. of me so yeah, yeah. those are the, uh the jumps the, the ellis and i for the sex and the city thing the, the, the jump scare one i can't think of right now but when i was um 
we were there and we were, and, and we were up on this balcony mm. and we we're watching it and Ellis like left to go to the bathroom or something too and I was like okay and then I don't know where he was and I don't ever check my phone in the theaters but like I'm like where is this guy and I look and all it says is get out of there get out of there right now <laughs> <laughs> and I like ah. that was it That's um awesome. Okay, so let's see. Next uh, next yeah. one here. Thank you for that one, too. It was a good memory to have. Yes, boy. Roka, thanks for preaching, Shogun. I'm hooked. Yeah. yeah. yeah I got I to see it. I got to watch it. Gotta, I'm, I'm, new episode tonight, bro. Get on. Uh, so what is it? Is it three total or two total right now? Three would be the one tonight, yes. Okay. All right. I'll watch them. Hmm. Madurf, uh, don't you think they ruined the danger of the sandworms from part one? They're almost treated as pets. N I mean, no, because what? no, because of the way that they, they it shows you how it tells you in the first movie mm -hmm. that the Fremen have learned to adapt with them. Yeah. And it just shows you that. And it shows you more so of what like they're, they're terrifying and they, they, they'll, they eat everybody and they use them as weapons. Right. So no, I didn't, I didn't find, I didn't, I think that the danger was there. They just learned how to control them. It's all about perception. The native yeah. cultures understand the animals of the land and how to call upon them in certain situations. That's what you see there. But from the outside, they're still terrifying as they suck up all the bodies. So yeah, I think you they kept the dread for sure. Okay, great. Uh, let's go to this one. Mm. The action is the juice. Great film, good with the changes, and Denis gets the theme. Struggling yeah. to understand the Alia choice. One part of the Lynch film people like is her. Why not have Psycho Baby? Did Twilight ruin it? I don't know enough about it. I think that maybe that maybe she does more in the in the book. Does she actually gets born? I don't I don't know enough about it because yeah. the Alia's choice. Maybe she maybe she is born already at that point i don't know yeah i'm not know. sure so i i can't answer that one as much because i don't know enough about what actually happens there i only know that what i saw in the movie i think we won't be able to put it in context till we see messiah so yeah uh mesby hello christian aroka do you think it was right or okay to help the frame and gain their freedom given their jihad causes billions of deaths um i mean it's tough to say it's tough to say and how i i think it was i think that the, that's what the choices are you're gonna have to struggle with at the end of what paul does in general because you're not necessarily supposed to be like yeah he did it because in the way that he does it in general so i think you're supposed to struggle with a ton of choices that are made throughout the entire film yeah and i think it it's the way this film portrays the harkonnen you don't care that there are billions of deaths with the harkonnen because they seem right. to be the representatives of the harkonnen seem to be very ruthless and uh, a murderous group of people so and and treasonous group of people and traitorous so their deaths don't necessarily mean that much when you're watching plus it's fiction it's not real right um miguel zion the last and look was like k's last glance in nah. the godfather That's one yeah then paul's intention to wipe out everyone is michael corleone-esque yeah i mean there's definitely those someone said that a couple, it does it has that godfather kind of feel to it doesn't totally, it yeah totally, totally. yeah especially yeah it, it, it really does when you look at what hmm. what how he's michael yeah for sure yeah yeah, yeah. Shit, I mean, the more and more you think about it. Gabe Oliveira, a little overhyped with the same pacing. The one that sometimes felt like I was watching The Matrix. It, but this came first. This, this came is what my, wife, this is my wife said the other day. My wife was like, she's like, oh, this is like Star Wars. I'm like, this came first. <laughs> this was before The Matrix. It was before Star Wars. It was yeah. before anything. You, a lot of the stuff they got from Frank Herbert. Um, this came first. So yeah. it was, and yeah, it does. I didn't. I'm gonna give you a big strong disagree, Gabe. Uh overhype, no pacing was fantastic. Um, I dug the one element of it. Three hours felt like four. I wish it was six, and also odd edits. Uh, couldn't disagree more. But hey, yeah. to each your own. Yeah. And and you know, you've got to work, you've got to do a little bit of work on your end if you're gonna be reviewing or commenting on these films put them in context you know you've got to know when did this source material come out and you know you can't change the source material fully because then it becomes a matter of you're not really actually adapting the book you're changing it completely so right yeah. um okay next one mad sinister right. mccall you can make any movie that you want what do you make and want i would make an avengers like movie with horror icons and make them battle and action star team well i would make science fiction fantasy movie for sure i mean there's definitely ideas and things that i had with with um kind of built off the ideas of what we did ultimately did with the he-man thing that we had done but there's other things that riley and i had come up with and some other okay. kind of a comic book that i came up with years ago that i'd like to try yeah yeah you oh uh, revenge, revenge. revenge a high high-end revenge film mm. that's what i would do something like uh you know it's just a revenge film that has a higher approach and quality to it uh, okay chris minor 
June part two was fantastic and better than the first. What did you guys think of The Rock's IG and SmackDown promos? I'm expecting Endgame portals to help out uh, Cody in the night two main event. I mean, somebody people are thinking that uh, that Dust that Dustin might come out, right? Maybe there's rumors yeah. about it for sure, yeah, which would make sense. Um, the promo, so the long one, I didn't watch all of it, but like it was on his Instagram. So it's like yeah, yeah. Roker wrote me also. He's like, who's gonna watch this? I was like, if you follow him on his Instagram, then you're gonna then you're gonna follow. this. Like, he didn't put it on SmackDown, but then on SmackDown, he did it was a 45 minutes. Uh, <laughs> it was like 31 minutes. It was insane. It was fantastic, yeah. and it told the story in the way he interweaved and the stuff that he was saying to the crowd was so yeah. old school to really to try to convince you that he wasn't going heel. <laughs> and what did I tell you? I told you that night one they were going to do a teams match yeah. with uh, with with the two with all four of them, and that's exactly what's going to happen. And now I do think that they're going to beat Cody and Seth, and I think that the bloodline rules are going to happen. What do you mean? You mean do you think bloodline is going to be in? Oh, I see. To set up the final yeah. fight, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, probably. I think all yeah. everything happens. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, twenty-one minutes. Ain't nobody got a time for a twenty-one minute promo. I, listen, here's the deal. I liked the thirty-one minute. Uh, stuff on smackdown so much better than the promo because i don't know i love the rock and i i you know chris likes to call me a turncoat uh with what i've done recently <laughs> but i've, I've kind of gotten a little sick of the act a little bit but when he's working yeah. with the bloodline it's much better i mean when roman stopped him from saying if you smell i've never seen that right in 20 some years of watching the rock to see that happen or 30 some years watching the rock that was a Perfect yeah. moment. Well, yeah, you know? and this when he acknowledges him, he takes off his glasses. It was, yeah, it was and great. already yeah. the Zapruder thing, people are like, Well, look at his thumb. He didn't go all the right. way up. With right. yeah. and I was like, yeah. Oh, it's perfect. It's a, it, yeah. yeah, so good. Um, and then yeah, night and night two will be pretty, pretty incredible. Yeah. So Carlton Rudder, Dune 2 is a cinematic masterpiece. There's nothing that Disney has done with Star Wars to rival or even come close to his incredible movie. Again, I got a kind of yeah, couple with what John said, where it's like it, you can't you can't comparing me and i will agree with you that i think that they're in that star wars needs a massive change but i will tell you that i think that the closest that they got was with andor but they're also doing that on television so it's hard i will agree with you that i don't think they've hit anything in scale to the movies yet or and as much of an investment to where i haven't been transported to the world of star wars the way i wanted to be um the way that i was in june i agree with that but i do think that they i just I, like i said i think that Star Wars needs a lot of change. It's not, I hate when people go, well, Star Wars is dead. It's not dead because because even if it was even if it was put to rest for 20 years, that means someone can go, hey, let's try Star Wars again, and it could work. So it's like I, it's not dead, but I think that it's in trouble. And I think that it needs, I think it needs a facelift. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, next. Yeah, I think Rogue One is on. Yeah, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Rogue One's pretty damn good. Yep. Yeah. Simon section off topic. Yeah. Christian, I'm halfway through severance and I'm lost. And I missed my flight to Hawaii. John Shogun, that first app, no spoilers. That guy who was waiting while well, I hope he gets his karma. Black Rain, old boy style. I don't care as long as it's slow. Mm. So you're, 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 oh, I, he's capital, he's capitaling lost yeah. on purpose because I agree, it does feel like lost. Um, once you finish the whole series, though, you'll, yeah. Yeah. first of all, Simon, thank you for that wonderful super chat. Yes. Very, very kind of you. Um, that's that's hilarious the, what he did there he when you read into it he's lost and missed my flight to hawaii okay, okay. john shogun that first episode no spoilers i got yes i gotta i gotta see i gotta see this i gotta see yeah, this. is who he's talking about yeah but she yeah. he's gonna he's gonna be an interesting character keep going through okay. the series uh, i can't so, wait yeah i cannot wait so paul Heyman is the first announced inductee to 2024 hall of fame he's still yeah, he's, he's still working I, it's such work. a crazy thing man yeah. i don't understand how that works he's still working maybe they're um is he, the bloodline he's gonna retire I don't know. He won't retire. He he's he, he'll never retire. He can't. He's one of those guys. He's got he's he's got a he's going to be like ninety years old and just pass her out in the in the ring. Yeah, but I worry about him, dude. Have you seen him? He's putting on a lot of weight, man. He, I'm he scared. Is. Like the heart attack thing is not far away. When you get older like that. Paul's one of my Paul's Paul's like Paul's one of the I guys that was very. Well, he was he was very good to me there. Oh, that's good. I still, I still keep in touch with him um, because like he uh, he was very good to me. So I, I wish nothing but the best for Paul. Agreed. Um, Tim Sim, given how well received critically and financially Dune 2 is, where do you hope to see Dune go in the future from adapting Dune Messiah to maybe setting up a new big IP franchise properly? Um, well, look, I want to see how that series goes, mm -hmm. and I want to see if they do the series right, and I want to see if you care about a thousand years beforehand. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, look, Denis has to do part three. If anybody else does it, I'm going to be bummed. Yeah. 
You're going to be bummed. Um, so that's really – and what I want to see, Tim, is them not do what other franchises have done and that jump the gun and start announcing 87 properties. Yeah, it's like, agreed. oh, we're going to do Dune 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're going to have Dune the new series. We're going to have Dune this. We're going to we're gonna make uh, a couple more series on HBO Max. It's like, no. Yeah. Just focus on the series that you have right now, the Benny Jesuit, because that was announced already. Mm -hmm. And then when Denis does announce three, everyone will lose their minds. If Avatar can wait almost 13 years, whatever the hell it was, before it came out again and did box office numbers like it did, Dune can do the same thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Don't rush it. Or we'll be saying the same thing about Dune that we're saying about yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, it's true. Um, Shane Marquet, nobody stops Vader from force choking people. <laughs> hey, outlaw John Rhodes. Good true. quote. Good quote. UFC uh, 810. This puts in a nice little... Uh, Thanks. Yeah, Matt Sarah also saw it. Loved it. Oh, well, yeah. Good. Yeah, talked to him over the weekend. Uh, Nathan winning. I wouldn't say Paul is bad. He's doing what he has to do. I mean, yeah, yes, but it doesn't mean that doing what he has to do wasn't a choice that ultimately he's becoming the thing that he didn't want to be. The Holy War will happen regardless. He's following his path that leads to less suffering. I don't disagree with that, but it doesn't mean that he's not going to be, you know, he's, 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 he's ruling with power. He's ruling with fear now. That's like there, there are, there's the choices that he had to do to get it done, but I think he broke bad. I do. You're sounding like uh, this guy sounded like um, Javier Bardem in the movie. Ball right. Happened. Yeah. right. He was, you know, he's supposed to. Yeah. He's supposed to. Tim Simigan. Also with the Oscars coming up this weekend, mm. all the op uh, of all the Oppenheimer nominations, which nomination do you see as most likely to be upset by another film? Um, well, not director. He's going to get director. Yeah, he's going to direct her in Best Picture for sure. That's the only one that I think would be the would be the one that could be upset. Maybe if okay. it's like holdovers, but I don't, I don't see it happening. No. Um, I don't know. Maybe because uh, those are the only ones that like kind of seem like they're locks. Everything else seems like could go any e either way, right? Is there any? I mean, well. I guess you know. I mean, I guess Killian Murphy could lose yeah. to Yamati, but is that is that really a big upset? It's been the, between the both of them the whole time, so yeah. I don't know if it's an upset. Yeah, I guess I. You know what? If 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 Downey doesn't win, uh, that would be a huge upset. Like, yeah. but the only one that he would lose to is to me that I think would be the one I'd be like, okay, is Ruffalo. But I, I, guess, I guess maybe score. Like if he lo if Ludwig Göransson loses score, that would be an upset to me. Yeah, because the other. Yeah. Four nominees don't come close to what Oppenheimer's score is. I think yeah. that would be a big surprise. Future millionaire. I like that. I like the okay. uh, I like the the vision. Sup, fellas. Finally saw Dune yesterday with my 15 year old son who really enjoyed it. How far down the book series is planned to be made into movies? Right now, they're just talking about Messiah. Yeah. And I think that Warner Brothers is probably going. Let's see how this one does. Let's keep Denis very happy. Let him talk about it in the interviews and. And then let's unload a truck full of money in his backyard once <laughs> this thing does well. So th that's that's all. It's just right now. It's just a TV show and Messiah. Unless you do you know anything else about that, John? No, that's all. So far, that's all they're working with. That's all they're yeah. talking about. Nothing yeah. else has uh, been in play. Um, UFC A10 never knew Lucas borrowed the Vader being Luke's father twist from the Paul Harkonnen reveal. Also, kind of like Ray being a Palpatine. I I don't. <laughs> that's the thing but because it was done so poorly dude yeah it was yeah. done so poorly mm -hmm. that everyone feels that way rightfully so right if it was well written yes yes set up in a way we're like oh shit yeah wow he set that up from the get-go that way you'd be like that oh, was a great twist but it was written so poorly of course you go because mm, it was terrible the way they re revealed that um so i don't mind it I was never I was never on board with the idea of like, well, she's in anybody. And I hated how everybody took their stance of like, oh, I love that she's in any anybody. I hated that. I hate I it. agree. I hate that too. I hate that. As we far go as to these movies to see special characters, special yeah. people. Yeah. I think she should have been Obi-Wan's descendant. That yeah, would that I would have been fine with. 100%. Because they, that is showing you that they weren't paying attention to the freaking shit that was set up before them. They had this whole thing where they could have set up this whole the whole satin stuff. Yeah, that happened during the Clone Wars. That Obi Wan had this secret relationship, mm -hmm. and Anakin was like, "You mother f, you did that! Wow!" And then you had this this descendants the whole time was raising, and you would have been revealed that, but Jay didn't pay attention to any of that stuff. Yeah. And said it brought back Palpatine, ridiculous. Um, I, I finished the ten episodes of the Dynasty, the New England Patriots series on Apple yeah. TV Plus, and I guess I got the screeners. 
And the things they reveal about the behind the scenes, that's what I hope they do one day as a documentary series about this entire yeah. sequel trilogy. I want to yeah. hear from their mouths what really fucking happened. You know? And as far, as far as the reveal of, I mean, you can see, you watch one and two, you can see so much of where Star Wars inspi was inspired okay. from. I mean, the voice is the force, you know, like yeah. the, the turn. I mean, because uh, Paul is essentially Luke and, uh, and Anakin in, in, yeah. in one um okay so this is uh renee reyes what's good boys will there be a dune part three or will it be a new title i'm not familiar with the books yeah so it'll be messiah if they do it and they'll probably they'll probably call it will they call i'm sure they'll call it part three and it'll be dune part three oh, boy, messiah yeah. or they just call it dune messiah as long as they have yeah. dune in the title yeah yeah so um yeah we gotta find i'm wondering when they're gonna an announce it though is the question mm. i wonder uh i felt like the scores in dune 2 sounded similar to world woman theme is it just me uh wonder woman theme it, it, i i know what the, i i know what they mean that one the 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 main theme of wonder woman has that bit of the you know with the 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 women kind of going ah like that, oh, that thing. oh right well it's yeah. it's i can i can see that it's it's got similarities i wouldn't say too much but it's got similarities you don't think so john no i mean i think it's it's a different um sound to her voice versus what you get in dune and when you look at, you know, the fact that the Fremen are based on, um, I mean, a culture, it's a different thing, whereas it's more Greek based with yeah. Wonder Woman. So you've got different approaches to the music that if you want to look at the, how they compose that's those songs, so the score rather. So. Um, okay, next one, Francisco mm -hmm. Lopez. Hey mm -hmm. guys, did you watch AW Revolution? The show was good, but the best thing was Sting's match. That was effing crazy. I'm happy to Sting. Thank you, Sting. I didn't watch Sting's match. Did you? I did not watch the match. I've watched some of the highlights, and I've watched his intro where they brought out his, I think it was his sons, okay. in different versions of Sting through the years, which I thought was fucking awesome. Okay, okay. so I can't wait to find it. I was not going to pay for it. No, those yeah. other matches look terrible, but I'll find some kind of, I'll find some way to watch it. That's what I'll say. Okay. Uh, Orange Grove 55. Haven't seen Dune 2 yet, so we'll have to revisit this stream after I watch. Just wanted to drop in with some love. That's very kind. Thank you. Keep up the great work. Very, very nice. If you appreciate that. Yeah, once you do, check it out. Once uh, we covered a lot. Um, Simon Section. Christian, you, sh you couldn't show a little class and recognize that in the fight scene between Paul and his cousin that Elvis was playing Sting. It's hilarious. Yeah. That is hilarious. <laughs> it, if you didn't see the 84 version, apologize. No, no. I, I, I remember it. Um, that's absolutely oh, yeah. but i mean they don't even they just look like humans with bad haircuts in there yeah, that's right sting with the leather fucking speedos it's, yeah like, it's, yeah it's pretty bad uh f the pharaoh vibes thank you thanks for putting me on the magic spoon amazing i got a bundle of new flavors with the spoon love the fruity and waffle boxes so far i ate it late night instead of other sweets cheers to the start of a good habit cheers I, what a what a wonderful thing to hear i love it and i've been talking about it them forever so i'm really really happy that you got that you checked that out and dug it like have you tried it yet john not yet no oh you uh, got it we'll jump on it for sure because yeah, i'm changing gotta... my eating habits as well at night so like based on our conversation a few weeks ago yep. so yeah you, gotta yeah. make that change um felix denise said in an interview at the premiere he's currently writing the third good can't wait cannot wait uh al Rencha. while i like turning red i don't think we've had a great disney animation movie since encanto and raya Great messages. You guys thoughts. I love both Encanto and Raya. You know, I haven't seen all the turning red. My kids love it, but I haven't I haven't seen it though. But I I yeah, I really dug um I really I dug uh the the Encanto a lot. Yeah. I thought Soul was great. So oh yeah, Soul wasn't bad. I love Soul. Yeah. Soul wasn't bad. I got probably it came out at a bad time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Encanto is a gorgeous, fucking great, man. I love yeah. that movie. Andrew Smith, remember my dad had passed away seven years yesterday. I'm sorry, man. Uh, yeah, condolences. Don't Dune is one of those movies he would have loved, having been a huge movie book, um, book fan. Yeah, well, I mean, look, man. Same thing. What I would say is like take take that with you when you go and, and you see it yeah. again, or you see it and then just uh, yeah, just and as as I, I'm sure John can talk about better than me, but like uh, that's probably the same. That's why I brought that up earlier with John. Yeah, yeah. It's always tough uh, when you see a movie and you're like, oh, my dad would have loved this. So yeah, but you know, that's he he did. He saw it through you. Like, just right. believe that when you're in there. Yeah. Um, the nerd Calvin, Paul versus Fade was such good choreography, yep. super refreshing. It was really good. That's not, that's one of the things I'm really looking forward to again when I go see it again. Is that fight? The fight was awesome. There's a lot of space yet. It felt like they were fighting in a phone booth, and I thought yeah. that was really well done. Uh, Benny David, thoughts on 2005 King Kong? I think it's underrated. I agree. I agree. I love that movie. And I'll tell you the thing with that movie though, it's it's too long. 
Mm. They spend way too much on the island. The the special effects were not ready oh, yet terrible. at that time. And um and yeah, it it but the movie is it's it's fairly emotional and the score is really, really well done. And Andy Circus again does a great job in that. Yeah, I think Jack Black is miscast in the film, and I also think that Naomi Watts wasn't the right choice. She's not a, in my opinion, not a classical beauty like Jessica Lange or Faye Ray, mm-hmm. we, which we've seen before. So for me, it didn't 100% work on that end. And this whole ice skating playing around, oh, that was ridiculous. Oh, but there were a lot of bones here that could have yeah. worked overall. So, But I just think Peter Jackson was exhausted when he did that. Yeah, movie. it should have been two hours. Movie should have been yes. two hours. The three-hour movie was too long. Armada, is Soderbergh legendary director status? legendary i say so i say he's a great director i wouldn't put him legendary okay. i think you and i have a different definition of legendary yeah mine's right <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know i'm not putting i'm not putting sodenberg in legendary i'm not putting greta gerwig there yet i'm not putting uh i'm not putting there's not legendary I'm really good not legendary. <sighs> all right uh let's see mike joyce the woman seated next to me yesterday made her partner go up and get popcorn soda refills five times what What's the most you've seen some of the, I mean, where was she pissing in a, in a little uh, urinal that she brought with her from home? Yeah. Were they 80 year olds? I could buy it if they were of 80 course. year olds. But, uh, yeah. I, I, I can't answer that question because I don't really know if I, I try to not pay attention to people in the theater. You know what I mean? But like, I, yeah, I don't notice. I mean, for me, I notice when I'm getting up a lot, I've only got up once during Dune to pee. And yeah. that was it. I don't, yeah. I don't get I don't go to full theaters, man. I really yeah, don't. it's hard. Met Bull, my buddy Met Bull. Do you think kids don't get enough credit for not being able to appreciate movies targeted for general to older audiences? That's what we like. You're, you're, he's right in the '80s and stuff. Like we like because my my daughter asked me yesterday, "How old were you when you or did you see rated R movies when you were my age?" And I'm like, "I saw rated R movies when I was like nine. Yeah. You know, like I remember seeing some of those movies and like that I saw and and." And I appreciated them. I don't know if I understood all of them, but I appreciated them. It's a good point. It's a good question. Nothing's in a vacuum, guys. And yeah. nowadays, I think we're much more afraid as a society about any exposure of our kids to anything. Whereas back in the 80s, we were much more like, fuck it. I mean, Christian and I, I, think, I bet we used to go off on the afternoons and go off with our friends for like four or five hours. Our parents didn't right. know where we were. And then we'd come home for dinner. That's kind of how it was. Now, everybody's a hawk over everything where are you going who are you talking to what are you reading right. what are you watching and so naturally you're gonna not be gonna think kids can't handle it when they can when they can yeah. um simon section do you think that post indie that james mango can deliver a, a Denis Villeneuve level star wars old republic movie is it even being developed well it wasn't to be clear it wasn't an old republic movie it was it was supposed to be like the the start of the jedi and the sith and all that mm-hmm. stuff or, or more so the beginning of the first jedi i think is, yeah, what, yeah. is what it was yeah look i'm not counting out mangle because he didn't deliver all the way on on indie it's like it's the guy's a great filmmaker so i wouldn't like he's another one yeah great filmmaker made some great movies yes. logan uh ford versus ferrari yeah, like yeah. I, I mean the list goes on and, on and on with that guy right yeah, legendary. Not calling him legendary yet. Oh, so, I don't call him legendary. No, but you think you think that his you think his resume is lesser so than Greta Gerwig's right now? Yes, because wow. I mean, do you, yeah, that Wolverine. Movie. How how good was that Wolverine movie? I mean, you know, well, the Wolverine movie, the director's cut. When you see it, actually, mm-hmm. the, what his version of it, like the, the, the unrated silver tongue girl, still in there? Then it's not know. good. But it's better. It's better. Um, he's. I, I think he, Copland. I think he has a b- bigger resume. Copland, I think, damn good. I think he's a way more experienced filmmaker that would be more would considered over Greta, and yet I still don't put him in. But she's what? done small and big scale and been successful sure. in both. She's she a very good director. I don't. That, I, I think so. it's too young to say she. She's had. She's not even what 35 40 years old but again the question was who are going to look back on and think is legendary. legendary. And yeah, I, I think she will achieve legendary right. status by the right. time it's over. Right. We'll see. Yeah. Um. Now, okay, let's see, we keep going through. Okay, Jesus Gutierrez, a lot of criticism, criticism towards Chani. I loved her character. I, I, yeah, I don't see, the, I don't know why I loved her character. I thought she was great. That's I have my great. suspicions, but yes, I think that's yeah. ridiculous. Any criticism of Zendaya yeah. or Chani as a yeah. character, she's nonsense. Great. No, she's great. The nerd Calvin, if you don't react to the Dune series, I'm gonna die. Well, I'm, I'm definitely going, I'm gonna definitely re, uh, review it, whether or not I react to it. They don't do well in reactions. On don't my die. Don't I know. Die. Um, they don't do well. Ellipsis ten. Hot take. Yeah. Anakin is a cheaper version of Paul Atreides. Shots fired. You're not you're not firing him at me. I, I think that I think that I think I said I think that the the turn was handled way better in Dune. To be honest with you, 
I, 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 listen, say what you want. I know there are people who defend that sequel trilogy. It's it's a or prequel trilogy. It's a terrible Anakin turn. And if they had done written that better, I think we'd have felt that a little bit more yeah. when it happened. So yeah, I look. I I have I have a deeper as I've talked about it many times. I have yeah. a deep appreciation for the prequels now. Sure. But I can also acknowledge that there's a lot of stuff that's just not well written. The stories are there. Right. The stories are there. Without the Clone Wars, and that's the way it was intended, that yeah. turn is not as strong. Yeah. Now, this I'm going to agree with. PTA and totally. Fincher are legendary directors. I'll give, I'll, that one I'll give you. Yep. I'll give you both of those. 100%. Yep. Good call. Um, okay, let's see. Carlton Rudder. Will you be watching the Oscars on Sunday? John will be doing... Oh, John, are you doing a live watch along? Totally. Uh, I'm in the UK, I'm, uh, UK and would love to join any live stream. I am not going to do a live stream. I'll probably do what I always do with the Oscars. I'll record them, and then I'll fast forward to the winners. <laughs> I'm sitting three hours to hear people talk about how great... How, I guess, guess what? I'm using my platform now to talk about how pizza places shouldn't have too much sauce on the pizza. It's like I'm, I'm done with it. It's like tweet about it. Don't tell me in, in your fucking speech why you don't want more sauce on pizza. Fucking gay is fucking gay. I'm done it. I'm done. I'm done with the Oscars. Uh, right. Stream them. All right. Let's see. Uh, last one. Ooh. Ellipsis. Oh no! Second to last one. <laughs> Ellipsis. When Lady Fenring tells Fide, uh, Fade to put his hand in the in the box, I thought, wow, that's direct. <laughs> like Hunter Bar. Then I thought, oh, that box. Hilarious. It's <laughs> good. That's good. <laughs> so I guess John's definition of legendary is sex lies and videotapes. Agreed. <laughs> that's a uh, that's from the nineties. Yeah, that was yeah. his first one. But no, I mean, there's so many good films that he's done. Fucking out of sight and yeah. All right. Well, there you go, Sean. We did it. Thank Full you. On big discussion here. Thank you to everybody who joined us today. Thank you for all the questions that you put in there. Thank you for um for everything, guys. Thank you. And if you want to support the show and you're able to support the show, please go and check out one of our sponsors. I want to thank John for joking uh, for jo joining us today. And we put in uh John's channel in the link in the description. But John, tell them about your channel. Yeah, it's uh youtube.com slash John Roca says the outlaw nation. Head on over there. Uh, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell button so you see we're dropping all the content. We got the hot mic. You know, Jeff and I back at it. We dropped our new episode on Friday. The Geek Buddies are going in full force. Uh, Jedi Way is coming back this week. And a uh, bunch of uh, reactions and trailers and all that stuff happening and new content. And as Carlton alluded to, a live watch along this Sunday for the Oscars. So a lot of stuff going on over there. We'd love to have you all's patronage. We'd love to have you all subscribe to the channel. Would mean so much. Trying to get to 50,000 by the end of the year. And I know you guys are an awesome group of people, so would love to have you come aboard and enjoy the content as well. And please feel free to suggest stuff. Uh, who knows? You might come up with something I want to do. So, yeah. Um, and to be completely honest, had you not written that, I wouldn't even known the Oscars were on this week. <laughs> <laughs> so, the go. Nerd Calvin hype for Travis Fimmel in the Dune series. Okay, yeah, me too. Um, all right. Thanks for joining us, John. Get out of here. Go watch Dune. Thank you, guys. I love all you. Right. Thanks, Tristan. Bye. Later. All right, guys. So once again, if you're able to, uh, the sponsors are there. Everybody. You guys are the best. We'll see you. We'll be back for tomorrow for UAP Tuesday. The new channel is launched, by the way. It is called uh, Down to Earth with Christian Harlow. So thanks to John. Thanks to you guys. Appreciate you. And we'll see you on the flip side. Bye.